You name the sport, we report on it. Your sports, only on Spectrum News. We tackle all the local, pro, college, and high school teams you care about. Get the latest sports news with your sports, only on Spectrum News. You're watching Spectrum News. It's 7 o'clock. Hey there, everyone. Welcome to Friday Night Matchup pregame show. I'm Kevin Carroll. Glad to have you with us this week because it's the final week of the regular season and rivals going head to head. Also, playoff positioning on the line. And we have a good one tonight with one of the biggest rivalries in Western New York meeting up. We have 6-0 Lancaster out of Class AA and Depew, 4-2 in Class B. It's our Friday night matchup game of the week. We also will have three games streaming at MySpectrumSports.com tonight. Jamestown and Orchard Park going head to head. Also that Maryville Cheektowaga game coming up in Faulkner, Casadega Valley on the road at Southwestern, but Right now, let's send it out to Sal Capaccio in Depew for a look ahead at tonight's Game of the Week. Thanks a lot, Kevin. Sal Capaccio here with the coach, Len Jankowitz, ready for one of the best rivalries in Western New York high school football. It's the Lancaster Legends and the Depew Wildcats. Lancaster comes into this game with one of the best teams they've had in years, and that's saying something. 6-0 and on the season, and this is a matchup that really everybody in Western New York looks forward to every year, Len. You know, did you see that uh, tailgating party out there as you came in, Sal? It's unbelievable. You know, these, these teams have been competing for nearly a century. It's homecoming, the pageantry. It's an unbelievable experience for the kids. Those who played in the game would like to relive it, but those playing, it, you know, playing today would like to just play for their home school, and it's going to be a great one. Speaking of Lancaster, that undefeated record, they are led by a two-way standout. He is number 62, Joe Andreessen. On the season, 163 yards, rushing, eight touchdowns, 49 tackles on defense, nine of those for loss, two sacks. He is all over the field, and oh, by the way, he's got two blocked kicks on special teams as well. You know, Sal, you never know speaking with him, but he's just so unassuming. He has qualities of a leader. And he is just off the charts versatile. How many players do you know, Sal, that play quarterback and offensive tackle in the same game? Very special, and he's capable of taking a whole game over. We told you about Lancaster being undefeated. In a game like this, you could throw out the records, but you don't have to with Depew because they have a very good record. They're coming into this game in the middle of Class B, 4-2 and two overall, and their leaders, their quarterback, number, number seven, Joe Pagano. On the season, 65 completions for 922 yards, 10 touchdowns. He's averaging 58% throwing the ball, 170 yards rushing, and five touchdowns to go along with that. You know, Sal, take it from the coaching staff. Joey Pagano was one of the most improved players all year. He's turned to Pew, Sal, into an explosive passing team through the air. Let's take a look at the keys to the game, Len. For Lancaster, they want to win the turnover battle. Don't give DePew any extra possessions. Also, manage the tempo of the game. That's how they got here at a 6-0 so far. And dominate on special teams. They've done that a good job of it so far this year. For the DePew Wildcats, ball possession. They don't want to give Lancaster and that high-powered offense any chances. Gang tackle, swarm to the ball. Make sure everybody's getting there. And on special teams, they have to help there with field position. I think special teams could be a very big game here today because on paper, this game favors Lancaster, but games are not played on paper. This is a huge rivalry. So as you and I both expect, Len, a very good one here today. We'll be back shortly with the kickoff, but for now, let's go back to Kevin in the studio. All right, thanks guys. Now aside from our games here and on our app, there are a lot of other big games tonight, and we're going to have all the highlights coming up a little later on. Connors and Ferris, first and 10. Andy Young's going to join me a full half hour of highlights from across Western New York. Last night, a couple of games going on. Iroquois, C.J. Perillo trying to make it seven straight games with a rushing touchdown. Uh, 
Alban down six to nothing in the second. Christian Snell snagged it a few moves and off to the races. 65 yards to the house and the Bulldogs up seven to six. Second quarter, Perillo goes to work, follows his blockers for 15 yards, nearly drags his defender into the end zone. Perillo does punch it in on the next play. It was an easy score. Perillo finished with five touchdowns, 219 yards. He leads all of Western New York rushers with 1,263 yards on the season as Iroquois takes care of Alden 36 to seven last night. Also, South Park sitting at six and zero last night. They're looking for their first unbeaten season and league title since 1993. Hosting Lakeshore, Sparks on the attack. The pitch to Clarence Thomas who gets the corner and just gets the ball over the plane. TD, two point conversion, eight nothing, South Park in front. Same score in the second. Sparks quick toss to Brandon Brown. He goes 45 yards untouched to the house. Another two point conversion and a 16 to nothing South Park lead. They add to it on their next possession with the inside handoff to Thomas. An eight yarder, two point conversion was no good. 22 to nothing Sparks at that point. South Park does get the league championship. Running away with it, 50 to six was the final last night. We have more on the Sparks coming up as Greg Vorst takes a look at the defense that has helped lead them to an undefeated season. That and more after a quick break. You're watching Friday Night Matchup pregame show. We'll be right back. Imagine if you had the power to choose whatever weather you wanted. Sunny and warm? You got it. Lawn needs a little water? No problem. The thing is, it's not possible. With Weather on the Ones, we can't control the weather, but we can give you updates every 10 minutes. So you'll be prepared for whatever weather conditions come your way. Weather on the Ones, only on Spectrum News. I routinely get emails that say you're too liberal or you're too conservative. I find that encouraging because it indicates to me that we're somewhere in the middle, which is what we're aiming for. And we have confidence that viewers have the capability of making their own decisions and taking in a whole wide range of information that we're hopefully providing to them and then subsequently they can determine how they feel and what they want to do about it. And that's our goal, is to inform. Capital Tonight, weekdays at 8 and 11.30 p.m. only on Spectrum News. If you had a magic crystal ball, it would be easy to predict the weather. But magic crystal balls don't exist? Lucky for you, there's Weather on the Ones on Spectrum News. With Weather on the Ones, you get local weather updates every 10 minutes from any device. Mornings, afternoons, or evenings, your forecast is always right around the corner. That's better than a crystal ball. Weather on the Ones, only on Spectrum News. All right, welcome back, everyone. Friday night matchup pregame show. Game of the week coming up in just a bit. But before that happens, let's talk about South Park. They're known for their explosive offense, but this season it's been the defense leading them to their first unbeaten regular season since 1993. Greg Vorce has more on what makes the Sparks D so formidable. We South Park's defense has been ready all year, allowing less than 10 points per game and pitching a pair of shutouts during their 7-0 start. We mean, we don't allow nothing. When, we, when it's come down to crunch time, this defense don't allow now one inch. A big reason the Sparks defense is so dominant was that young man, lineman Jeremiah Sanders, who stands a daunting 6'3", 285 pounds, and returns to South Park as a two-time All-State performer. Jeremiah, crazy. I can it's speechless. I don't have nothing to say about it. But what has their opposition searching for words are the hard hits, something South Park loves to inflict. Just seeing teams just wanting to give up and they don't want to get hit no more. They just getting tired, they getting hurt. It, it's a lot of fun just seeing teams like that. Our mentality is just keep on hitting them back to back to back. Defense got to stop them every play. Offense got to execute what they got to do. When you play fast and physical, you know, it, it raises the level that we're going to play all night long um, on, in all phases of the game. Um, and it kind of sets the tone. While the defense is setting 
a destructive tone, the Sparks offense is still as electric as ever, lighting up the scoreboard to the tune of over 35 points per game. It's really explosive. I love watching even my QB, wide receiver, anybody make play if it's not me. I love watching them make plays, touchdowns, all of that. When it's going, it's going really well. Um, we have a lot of fast kids that you know can can do some things in open space, and we try to create uh, we try to create some some plays to, to have them be able to get into uh, into good spots and and hopefully use that speed. That combo has this group unbeaten, ranked 10th in the state, their first perfect regular season since 1993, or before any of these guys were a spark in their parents' eye. To be seven and zero for the first time since 1992 is really an honor. So, and we just out here having fun. We young kids, we out here having fun, and it's just a pleasure to be out here playing football. Achieving that, that was one of my goals. It's pretty amazing. Now it's time to go win a ring at the Dome, step by step. South Park looks to start yet another state title run when the playoffs start next week. With the Sparks, Greg Vorce, Spectrum News Sports. All righty, thanks, Greg. And here we go. It's just about kickoff time. Our game of the week, Lancaster in Depew. Old time rivals going at it. Lancaster looking to finish off a perfect season as well in Class AA, taking on Depew out of Class B. Uh, that game just about to get underway. You can also check into our game streaming online by going to the uh, myspectrumsports.com. You head over there, you can catch Jamestown and Orchard Park going head to head uh, out of Class AA. Also, Maryvale and Cheektowaga. Always a good one there. And down in the southern tier, Faulkner Casadega Valley going up against their longtime rival, Southwestern. Uh, that game in Lakewood there. And don't forget to come on back later tonight for Connors and Ferris, first and 10. Andy Young's going to join me this week as he usually does. We'll bring you extended highlights, feature stories, top plays, and a lot more. The show airs. Every Friday throughout the season from 11 to 11.30, you get a replay coming up Saturday mornings at 8.30 in case you can't catch it later tonight. But up next, we send you out to Depew. I'm Kevin Carroll. We'll see you at halftime. Imagine if you had the power to choose whatever weather you wanted. Sunny and warm? You got it. Lawn needs a little water? No problem. The thing is, it's not possible. With Weather on the Ones, we can't control the weather, but we can give you updates every 10 minutes. So you'll be prepared for whatever weather conditions come your way. Weather on the Ones, only on Spectrum News. No matter how perfect the weather may be, that can change in the blink of an eye. That's why Spectrum News has weather every 10 minutes. When you need the weather, we have the weather. Spectrum News, your 24-hour local news channel, has weather every 10 minutes on the ones. One after, 11 after, 21 after, you get it. Your next local forecast is just a few minutes away. Weather on the ones, only on Spectrum News. I routinely get emails that say you're too liberal or you're too conservative. I find that encouraging because it indicates to me that we're somewhere in the middle, which is what we're aiming for. And we have confidence that viewers have the capability of making their own decisions and taking in a whole wide range of information that we're hopefully providing to them and then subsequently they can determine how they feel and what they want to do about it. And that's our goal, is to inform. Capital Tonight, weekdays at 8 and 11.30 p.m. only on Spectrum News. If you had a magic crystal ball, it would be easy to predict the weather. But magic crystal balls don't exist? Lucky for you, there's Weather on the Ones on Spectrum News. With Weather on the Ones, you get local weather updates every 10 minutes from any device. Mornings, afternoons, or evenings, your forecast is always right around the corner. That's better than a crystal ball. Weather on the Ones, only on Spectrum News.
Welcome here to Depew High School, Frank Constantino Sports Complex. Sal Capaccio with the coach, Len Jankowitz, for one of the greatest rivalries, not only in Western New York, not only in New York State, but throughout the entire nation. It's the Depew Wildcats hosting the Lancaster Legends, coached by that man in his second season as head coach, Eric Rupp. He has guided his Lancaster team to 16 wins in only 17 games as the head coach at Lancaster. On the other side of the field, Brian Wilson. He's been there a little bit longer. He's now in his sixth season as the head man at Depew High School. 30 and 23 overall. They come into this game four and two on the season, looking for a monster upset, but it is a huge rivalry game, and we know where that can always take us. It is a beautiful night for football here in Western New York. 64 degrees at game time is the temperature. Humidity about 69 degrees. We're gonna have a bit of a breeze, not much at all, and a chance of a shower a little bit later. I don't even think we're gonna get down into the 50s here as we sit in mid-October in Western New York. The officials, Al Fuller, Brian Medee, Bobby Dorfline, Rick Wisniewski, and Jerry Inglet will be officiating tonight. It will be Max Giordano teeing it off at the 40-yard line for the Lancaster Legends in their white uniforms and red helmets. As the Depew Wildcats won the toss and have elected to receive here tonight. We're underway in one of the great American football high school rivalries. The first kickoff down to the goal line and trying to get up through the 20 yard line and about to the 24 yard line is the return man. We'll see who is on the bottom of that pile when they get up. But in the meantime, Depew will have their first crack at it as we begin things here tonight. Sal, great to be with you. I mean, check this crowd out. This is one of those overflow crowds in the Depew Lancaster game. Uh, great rivalry, been going on for almost a century and uh, great atmosphere here. And Joe Pagano will lead the Depew Wildcats Cats out of the huddle. 58% completion rate on the season. 922 yards, he's thrown for 10 touchdowns as well. They'll go to shotgun and they'll throw the ball in the first play. Pagano has a man, but it's knocked away. That pass intended for number five, Sean Miller. Yeah, Lancaster brought a little, little bit of pressure on that play. Let's take a look at the offensive line. It's Dwyer, Yelich, Steiner, Shaw, and Post. All seniors except for the junior, Yelich, up front, protecting Pagano. Behind him, skill players, Cheslinski, Biersbach, Miller, Durienzo, and Cheselski. Interesting here that Depew uh, took the ball on the coin flip here. They just want to produce some offense for yourself. They're getting some on this play. A first down run, getting to the sticks, staying up on his feet after the hit was Jordan Chiselski. You know, that's a big important first down. We'll take a look at the lane catch defensive line. Missouri, Rogowski, Shermonte, and Mahalski up front. Behind them, it's Beto Andreessen. We'll hear his name a lot tonight. Damiani and Klima, and in the secondary, it's Backer, Giordano, and Benham. How about that run, though, on, for, on second down just to gain first down yardage? Right, just what they needed, Sal. And, I, you know, it's, it's uh, the time of possession for a team that might be a slight underdog in this football game, and I say slight. I mean, they have a four-game winning streak, Sal, so they're, you know, they're quite the home dog. They're going to throw again. Pagano's pass is batted down. Good job by the defensive line of Lancaster to step in front of that one. So Depew already showing in three plays, Coach. They are not afraid to put the ball up in the air. Joe Pagano has uh, probably, according to the coaching staff, Brian Wilson has said that he has improved so much. Here he had the ball batted down, uh, I believe, by John Rogalski. But, it, it, you know, he's improved so much since the beginning of the year. And if you take away that two-point loss, Sal, from game number one, and they were up 14 nothing on Albion in the second game, they could really be 6-0. And we would know? have had two undefeated teams here tonight. As it is, we have one undefeated team and another looking to knock them off. To appear with a second and 10 at their own 35. Here's a toss sweep out of shotgun. And another big run, gaining about six yards. They're going to say maybe a five-yard gain there for the running back, Chiselski. You know, that's been his favorite play. But just watching some film on Jordan, he really takes the edge, uh, you know, throughout the season. There, Lancaster Noodle was coming, kind of turned it back in, and uh, the linebackers, which Lancaster has three, probably some of the best in West New York, did the rest. So a big third down here on the opening drive for Pagano and the Wildcats. Great atmosphere. <laughs> 
you can smell the popcorn and the hot dogs here way up in the booth. It's an uh, incredible atmosphere for a high school game. Trips to the left. They'll throw the hitch screen to the wide receiver on the right. And gaining not enough yardage is Kwiklinski. I'm sorry, that's Beersbach, Chad Beersbach, the 6'3 senior. Doesn't get enough for the first down. It brings up fourth and about two. Yeah, and the important thing on that is just gang tackling. Uh, Chad Beersbach will probably go down in DPU history as one of their leading receivers, if not the leading receiver. That's saying a lot. They've had some good ones here. Yeah, and you can credit that inside linebacker pursuit. It's gang tackle. You know, get there, and uh, if you're there as a group, you'll make it. You'll make the tackle. So DPU has elected to punt here. Head coach Brian Wilson not taking any chances on the first drive. It's almost blocked. But a good job to get it away there by the punter, Jordan Chiselski. You know, that's a prize, Sean. They, they have really, they have really worked on special teams this year. Block punts have been their forte. Sal, and I kind of think in terms of what has been going on with Lancaster, they, they yield field position. Big plays have been their modus operandi. Let's see what happens here. Ryan Mansell's the quarterback. He comes into this one with over 1,000 yards passing and eight scores through the air. So they'll go with a up-tempo offense, reading the plays right off the wrist, letting his teammates know. Here's the handoff. And a nice job by the defensive line of Depew to bottle up the back on the first carry of the game. That is number 34, Andrew Hersey. So the legends will get right back up on the line here. They run a fast-paced offense. You're gonna see a lot of this tonight. Ball sits right at the 37-yard line, second down and eight. Here comes a pass. Wide open and running free for Lancaster is number 14, Max Giordano. You know, Sal, you'll see a lot of those run pass options. Uh, actually, it was the same pattern run by Max before. Callow, Gaka, Mahoney, Lepiana, and Dreesen up front. There you see these players, Giordano, Martin, Mira, Hersey, Backert, behind them as the skill guys. Twins to the left and right. This time, Depew is there, right up front on the defensive line, did a nice job, and let's take a look at that defensive line. It is Beersbach, Post, Siner, and Dwyer, all seniors up front for the Wildcats. Behind them, Albana, Liss, and Huey, three more seniors. The only two juniors of the group are the safeties. Darienzo and Miller, they are surrounded by Chiselski and Clark at the corner spots. Yeah, the deal is really stout in that defensive line, probably one of the better defensive lines Lancaster will face this fall. There's a pass right down the middle, and walking into the end zone on a huge pitch and catch and run is number 14, Max Giordano. Our first score of the game belongs to the legends. Giordano had to reach his hands out for that one, but he was able to get it, and he was able to get it into the end zone after that. You know, one of those things where Mansell threw where nobody else can except for Max. Just got on top of coverage and scoring big, scoring quick has been what Lancaster has done all year, Sal. Giordano came into this game with 467 yards receiving. I think after that one, he'll be over 500 yards. 27 catches on the year and two scores. Make it three and make it six nothing Lancaster with the extra point coming up. And guess who's going to kick it? <laughs> that same Giordano, but it is a fake. Rolling out and throwing it into the end zone for the two-point conversion. And it was caught by Tyler Soklowski. Well, a great opening drive for Lancaster again, Sal. That's as what you they get have for having started. your holder, the quarterback, right, Manziel? Yeah, exactly, and it's just uh, typical of what's done here. Brian Mansell has been just on the money with a lot of these passes throughout the year. By the way, this is his second year at the helm, and he's done the same thing last year. Great protection, gets rid of the ball. Maybe like Tyrod Taylor should do with the Bills, you know? <laughs> anyway, but it's just, uh, you know, Max is a do-all, do-everything-the-right-way kind of guy, and uh, his speed is phenomenal. Shows that he can get open and catch the ball, put it away. That is Lancaster to the tee. 
So Lancaster strikes first. It was a four play 65 yard drive and it was 51 yards on the catch, the reception and the touchdown by Max Giordano from Mansell. You know, I wrote down some things about opening drives, you know, find out what's working for you and don't abandon it. Well, <laughs> they haven't abandoned that for the whole year and it's really worked for them and just uh, big plays, scoring quick, you know, taking a win out of the sails of the defense is really what's worked for them all year. Why not just keep doing the same thing? Don't change anything. But if you're Brian Wilson, you gotta be a little upset there were no safeties home on that one. I and mean, he just basically went right by a couple of guys. You know, Lancaster has that in their arsenal. Have to know where Giordano is when he's running down the field. You know, typically, Sal so DePue has been a, a, a run dominant play action kind of team over the years, but because of Joey Pagano, they've been a, a more of a pass offense team. You can tell by his stats, he's, he's close to a thousand yards now as a junior. He's done well. They've really opened up the passing game. So this is kind of playing into DePue's hands a little bit. They can score. Chad Beersbach is one of their best receivers of all time. They just have to play the possessions. They'll go back to offense here. Let's see if they go back to the air with Pagano. Down 8 0 early. 8 39 left first quarter. Lancaster draws first blood, and they're going to draw a penalty here. That's a good call. I thought they got there a little bit early. Yeah, as well, Scott, there was a little flood pattern coming out to the right hand side, and the linebacker jumped him just a bit. So the pass interference will move the ball up. Short. Little gain after the interference call, but it'll remain first down. You talk about the linebacking core of Lancaster, as I mentioned before, there's some of the, the 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 three best probably in Western New York all on one team. It's really incredible to see them fly around and, and make plays, Sal. I, I really credit to the coaching staff to put it in the right spot, but they are aggressive kids that play well and play smart. It was actually a 15-yard penalty, even though the ball was it was only about a five yard pass. You get the 15 yards there on the pass interference call. And here's the give. Chiselski trying to get to the outside. He can't. So a swarm of legends are there to meet him right by the sideline. You know, the defense has been stout all year, Sal, for the entire season leading up to today. The starting defense has yielded six points. Six points for the year. So you can tell that they get to the ball. There, the linebacking core, along with the defensive line, help Ben Damiani finishing the play. They're 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 really, you know, they're well coached again, but they just fly to the football, which is what they have to have. It was Jeremy Clark, by the way, on the carry, not Chiselski. So Clark had that carry. Chiselski will be one of the receivers on the trip side here, but they'll give it off to Clark again. Clark has an opening, but he gets to about the original line of scrimmage and then maybe falls forward for a couple of yards. So it'll bring up another third down this time third and eight for DePew who have already punted one so far. Legend defense is bringing some pressure that so beat will come off the edge that way. Uh, Co Coach Mansell wants to keep the, the accelerator around his defense and uh, pressure is really what these guys are all about because they defend so well Sal in the in the back end. Giordano back have been around for a while. Benham, Klima. Great secondary. Pagano will go to the air. He'll throw. He has a man, but it's overthrown. Intended for Beersbach. Boy, Beersbach took a shot there. That ball was sailed pretty high over his head. And, you know, Beersbach is not small. Uh, he stands at 6'3", and that ball was sailed over his head. No, and he has some football ahead of him, too. Uh, he's a bright young man, and uh, Coach Wilson thinks he'll be, he'll be playing at another level. Right there, the level is too high for him to bring down that ball. And... And Kyle was, Kyle Backard was very good. Let's take a look at the pressure here. Boom. That's what he's facing and what he's going to see a lot of tonight. Yeah, Ben Mazur finished that one with an exclamation point, as they say. There's another point. I think they might have got a piece of that, Coach. You talked about the block kicks they've had this year. They might, Lancaster might have got a piece of that one. I'm not too sure. If they didn't, it was definitely rushed because they were coming hard. Yeah, the pressure just forces the punter to do things they don't normally do. But again, this just surrenders field position. Gives Lancaster a chance to score again. And uh, again, as always, it shortens up the field. So Chiselski had to be quick on that one. Let's take a look. Let's see if they had got an arm on this. Yeah, pressure came off the C gap. And nope. as long Maybe as not. the arms are up, Sal, it's not like practice. That's right. I think he just had to rush it. He saw those guys coming in, so he 
Had to get rid of it very, very quickly. 6.58 left, first quarter. Lancaster back to work here up 8-0. Hersey in the backfield. But they're going to throw this one out to the sideline again. Looks like about a three yard gain. They're going to call it only a yard, a yard gain after he stepped out of bounds. And bring up second down and nine. Yeah, you know, put the ball in space and let the players do the work, Sal. So. Here we There's go a again. toss, Giordano on the outside. A flag comes in. Giordano to the 40, to the 30, tries to run over a defender and gains a few more yards while doing it. There was a flag thrown yeah. right in the middle of the offensive and defensive lines just as soon as that ball was snapped. Let's see what this is. It might be coming back. Yeah, I believe it is. You know, Sal, those, those quick passes at the sideline, as you all know, Takes the game from being 11 on 11 to being two on two, two on two basketball. All of this is just fast, great, fast break basketball, and you got to put your money on Giordano anytime he puts the ball in his hands. Yeah, the ball was thrown to the wide side of the field. Less, got, let, there's more room out there, and if you have that type of athlete out there, why not give him a chance? The built-in benefit too is that that defensive line has to sprint out to the sideline, and I don't think they like to do that. Otherwise, you know, it just makes them tire out a little bit quicker. A lot of built-in benefits to the spread offense. This is just one of them. See where they put Giordano now. He's the guy they look for in the passing game a lot. He is spread out to the right. Two out there, two down at the bottom on the left as well. There's a toss into screen pass. Well-designed screen. This is Hersey. Hersey cutting back and gaining maybe first down yardage across the Depew side of the field. Yeah, a little screen to the left-hand side, little convoy of blockers in front. Andrew Hersey does the rest. He's got great vision, too, and he's a quick, one-cut kind of kid. He can tell right there, Sal. Yeah, he looks like you back at Cleve Hill, huh. I think, a little bit, doesn't he? Yeah, man. He's Actually, got a little bit more meat on his bones than I had back then. <laughs> a little Andrew, bit more. Andrew's had uh, a, a great year. Actually, last year he had that flashes much. of brilliance, and he's continuing it this year. Just a real tough inside runner, and... Takes it outside with a with an aggressive attitude. Percy gets the fake here. There's the toss, and it's caught in a nice tackle by Chiselski right at the midfield stripe. Really nice job there by the youngster Chiselski to come up from his corner spot. Yeah, Kyle, Kyle Backer probably a little disappointed in himself because of defensive back. You mentioned uh, Jordan came up and made a pretty good play here because it takes one to know one. Kyle's a two-way player. He knows how to play defense. Tip your hat off there to Jordan. Big play here, Sal. Yeah, it is. Manzel is Mansell is getting the call from the sideline. Now he lines up, gives it to Hersey. Then he fakes the pass after that. DePew wasn't fooled by that. He had a nice game, but after the loss in the previous play, it'll bring up a third down and nine. Yeah, a little uh, kick out G play there to try to give uh, Hersey some room. Got a chunk of it back. Giordano's at the bottom of your screen. You see the adjustment they made, Coach? They've, they've put number 10, uh, Breesbach, on him. Right. Here's a toss, they're gonna to go the other way, it's caught. And a nice tackle again, again made on Backer. He's not gonna gain first down yardage. Now I wonder if they'll have Breesbach follow Giordano around anywhere. Well, Breesbach is a basketball player, uh, an accomplished one too. He, I mean, he can play, probably a power forward or guard himself and probably a great match for Max. Yeah. Looks like here they're going to even maybe have a, a player over the top here at Giordano. Now, they, now the safety comes in. So it's a fourth down. They're going to go for it. Here's the throw, and it is caught. First down yardage for Lancaster. They get a fresh set of downs. There's a flag on the play, however. So a roughing the passer call coming up will add 15 to the end of that one. But it's a tough break for 
Depew. They had him in a fourth down situation. Not only do they convert, but they have to give up 15 more. It's going to be a gain of about 20 total on the play. You know, that's amazing, too, because that was a, a quick release by Ryan Mansell, and he still got belted at the end here. So uh, the offensive line has to do a, a better job with the pressure coming in on the inside there. Don't think there's any malicious intent there by number 73 for Depew, but but he but you gotta hold up. You gotta hold up. Ben Yelich probably would like to have that one back. Yeah. I don't think he was trying to drill him into the ground, but he has to know better to not do it too late. There's the give, and it's Hersey. Hersey with a nice move at around the 10 yard line, getting down to the six. Yeah, it could be a holding call coming back here, Sal. He's uh He's an amazing running back, you know, he just finds that little sliver and accelerates to the point where he needs uh, very little room to make adequate yardage here. That's exactly what it is, so we will march it back. As you see in the distance there, right behind where this play was going, all of those people, boy, it is some crowd here tonight, Coach. They are packed in this place at the Frank Constantino Sports Complex. Yeah, it's an amazing crowd. It's, uh, Look at that. You know, two communities come together. They're just, uh, they're taking pride in their yeah. schools and just celebrating the day, which is what this thing's all about after the madness probably that happened this week in the schools. And oh, by the way, that was just a Lancaster visiting crowd we just showed you. And that's <laughs> who you see across the way. On this side, this is packed with the Depew people. Absolutely. Hersey with a huge hole at the gut. Hersey at the 10. Hersey at the 5. Touchdown, Lancaster. Gaping hole off the right side, whether or not there was a blitz or maybe somebody took a wrong gap, but just Andrew just put the pedal to the metal and just uh, ripped the big game for a TD. Just uh, he's starting out with some some great yardage to to pad his uh, stats for the year, but just a one cut kid. It just smells the end zone and Sal. What a what a great start for Lancaster. He averaged 6.3 yards coming into this one. He has over 600 on the season. He'll add to it there. The kick is up, and Giordano makes it a 15-0 game. So we've seen it from a variety of ways already, Coach. You talked about it. I mean, they, have a, they can throw the ball. They can run the ball. We see the run game here. Yeah, there was a little bit of uh, wraparound blitz going on. You know, safety was out of position, and Andrew took, took the quickest route to the end zone and hit the pylon. You know, Sal, it, games like this where, you know, the obvious underdog is the two here. You, you're looking to keep the game close. I mean, what normally in a, in a high school football game, there might be 60 plays, nine to, eight to nine possessions. You have to limit the possessions to the team that really likes to score like Lancaster, and that's not going on now. And you can't, you really can't add to those big plays because they're going to mount on the scoreboard. And they do there, seven plays, 57 yards total. It was a 30-yard run by Hersey to get into the end zone. Brian Wilson searching for some answers. As you see, one of our former Spectrum members, Sean Brusso, on the sidelines. He's done plenty of games over the years with us. You may have heard him and seen him, but now he's back coaching at his alma mater, Lancaster High School. You coached Sean in high school. Yeah, I probably coached half the people in the stands. And so <laughs> you probably did. But anyway, Sean was I one of our... I you coached the staff, all of them. All those like ball-headed besides. guys here in the front <laughs> row I probably had. But anyway, no, Sean was one of our backup quarterbacks. <laughs> so he loves the football game. He loves, he loves the X's and O's of it, and he's in a great spot. Ball bounces and lays there. That's dangerous for Depew, but they finally pick it up and get out to the 26-yard line. Yeah, and getting back to, to Depew on defense, Sal, I'm sure, and I'm sure Brian Wilson would like to have a defense that bends, it doesn't break, because you chew up the clock, but that just didn't happen in that first quarter. So you're you're kind of backed up when the scoreboard, and you're not doing what you wanted to do. Let's take a look at the tail of the tape. Lancaster on the season, 286 points scored, and only 78 allowed. But you look at that defense for Depew, pretty good as well. Passing and rushing, that's the big thing. Look at that balance between in this team. That's pretty amazing for high school football. A total of 2,200 yards on the year, and I mean, it's almost split down the middle. As I mentioned before, points allowed, Sal, the starting defense has allowed six wow. for the year. Handoff there, and a nice way to weave through traffic by Chaselski. The 5'8", 155-pound senior did a nice job to elude a couple of white jerseys there. It's been a great asset for the 
Wildcat offense throughout the year. I saw him on tape just uh, just battles, just battles for every yard he gets. Good change of direction, protects the football. Down here at the bottom of your screen is number 10, Chad Biersbach. Let's see if they go his way. Now it's gonna be a run, and man, oh man, was Pagano hit right away by Andreessen. We said earlier on we're gonna talk about Andreessen, that's why. That's what he can do for you off the edge. Yeah, there's, a, <laughs> there's an old adage, if four doesn't work, bring five. If five doesn't work, bring six. If six doesn't work, drop eight, and if dropping eight doesn't work, put the campfire out, bring the dogs home, it's over. <laughs> I said it was Andreessen, it was actually number two, Mitch Klima. Uh, Andreessen was there, he was on the other side, but number two, not 62, uh, Klima was the one that came in and made that play. But this Lancaster defense has all sorts of players. They, 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 you say the starting defense only allowed six points, but the guys that can come in for some of those starters are pretty darn good as well. You know, the unsung heroes too, Sal, the defensive line, you don't hear much about them, but they're doing a heck of a job in their own right. I mean, they're, they're, they're doing their job. They're clogging up the offensive line. Mahalski, Sharamani, Rogowski, Mazur. They're doing a great job up front. By the way, Ben Mazur. Oh, I'm sorry. Stop. That's okay. We'll do this real quick. Uh, this coming Wednesday on Spectrum News, Kevin Carroll and Sabre alum Andrew Peters break down the Sabres plays, players, and analysis on Hockey Tonight. Tune in each week, Wednesdays at 6.30 and 10.30, right here on Spectrum News. Got to tell everybody about their hockey in Western New York, uh, Coach. You know you know that, right? I'm only smelling hot dogs and, I know, and popcorn right now. I, <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't push the snow stuff here yet, will you? Anyway, getting back to saying. the defense, uh, Ben Mazur is a, is a quality young man. How about this, Sal? I, I went to get a cortisone shot on my shoulder. I hate to tell people about my private life here, but in that doctor's office was Ben Mazur being an apprentice to one of my orthopedic surgeons, Mike Ostenpowski. How about that? Ben Mazur. That's amazing. Yeah, he's just shadowing a doctor in the doctor's office because he wants to be a physician, and here he's playing defensive end for the, for the legends. How about that? Third down and 11, here's the throw, and it is gonna go to Biersbach, who hangs on to it, an amazing catch. Chad Biersbach, Biersbach, uh, Biersbach yes, excuse me. The 6'3", 200 pound senior. If, Boy, he had yeah, to stay if, with that one all the way. Sam, if you see this on replay, Kyle Backard is in excellent position, is just at the height advantage. And the concentration of Chad Beersbach brings that down. He's done that before. Superlative hands. Credit him with that, but certainly don't discredit Kyle back with this effort either. Well, they're giving him some room out there, too. You know, they might just want to throw it to Beersbach off the line a couple of times here. They're giving him a lot of respect out there, as they should. This is going to be a flag, and it's probably going to be a false start against the Pew. That's what it is. So they're going to march him back five yards. So the Pew takes a big step forward, but a little step back here. But they have to be able to be a little more consistent. That play there, something that's good, but I think they'd like to have the running game get going a little bit so they don't have to rely on that big play down the sideline. You know, there's nothing out of the ordinary about in big games like this, big players step up. Chad Beersbach, Joe Pagano, Chiselski, you know, Wayne Forsiklinski to, to make a couple catches. These are the kids on the Pew side that have to make big plays. Likewise, on the Lancaster side, you've seen it already. Giordano making big plays, Mansell making big plays, Hersey making big plays. There's a snap at Chiselski. He has an opening and he drops the football. And Lancaster picks it up. It's Giordano at the 45, down the sideline. Next, Giordano gets a huge block right at the 35-yard line. And that gets him into the end zone. Wow. He picked up a peel back, <laughs> back block that just rocked someone's world out there, and he got all the way to the end zone. I think he might have made it anyway, but boy, yeah. the Lancaster players were blocking for Max once he retrieved that fumble. Yeah, it's almost like a punt return, and credit his baseball ability by taking a, a ground ball and taking all the way back to the house. Uh, he's a, a D1 scholarship athlete in baseball, Sal, and uh, Obviously, he has speed to burn in that one, as you can tell. But when he turns the corner, there's not many people that can chase him down. But being around the football, as Max always is, is credit to him. That's what got him six points. When we watched the replay, that was a strip of the football. They were hacking at the ball. 
and Chisowski put it on the ground because of it. That's a good extra point by Giordano, by the way. But when we see this replay, watch. They they, they strip it. They're, they're hacking at this ball, Coach. Watch this. Bam. Right there, John Rogowski. Here you go. Credit him. Max Giordano, take John Rogowski out for a milkshake, will you? Because he's giving out six points right there. We might see the peel back block here coming up as well uh, from this angle. There's Rogowski that stripped it with the right hand. That was a great job. Here comes the block. Yeah, Come in your screen. Are, Bam. Right on the right edge. Those That's are tough. timely and exactly. It's one of those things that uh, just happened to be there because he's there and the people don't see him coming and then it turns into a roadblock real quick. One more look at it here. Boy, how do you, I, well, you never see the ball bounce like that. It just stayed straight up in the air and allowed Giordano just to grab it on the fly like that. You know, credit the Lancaster staff for coaching that sale. That just doesn't happen. That's right. Turnovers. There's Rogowski, the Yep, there he is. Man who stripped the ball. Yep. We know where you are, Jan, believe me. <laughs> anyway, that, that's taught. And uh, the coaching staff does a great job with that. And certainly it turned into six points there. And uh, we all know what motivates kids, Sal. Results. There it is. There is a penalty of some sort on the play. Uh, the extra point, I'm assuming, against Depew because they just marched it 15 yards towards the Depew end. And the kickoff will actually take place on the Depew side of the field. I got to credit Bryce Benham for being around that football too, along with John. Maybe he had a little bit of tug in that jersey to open up that that elbow area where the ball was dislodged. But both Bryce and John had uh, a lot to do with six points for the for the legends. So a big 22 nothing lead here with time remaining still in the first quarter for Lancaster. And the kickoff. It's not Giordano who kicks this one. It's number 25, Parker Zeman. Probably have to give Max a little <laughs> yeah, rest here, huh? A little break, a little break. <laughs> well, much unlike uh, what Coach Wilson would like to have the game start, this is how most of Lancaster games this year have begun, Sal. It's just an explosion of points in the first, second quarter. And uh, a lot of their kids, by the time the third and fourth quarter uh, come around, the starters are on the bench, you know, and uh, other players are in, which is great for the depth chart, so to speak, here. But that's how they've operated. Yeah, they get valuable experience, too, because, you know, as you go on in the state playoffs, that they're lucky enough to advance and they're good enough to advance that far, they're going to need contributions from some of those players. Exactly. There's going to be injuries. There's going to be times where guys are going to have to come in and play. There's a pass, and that one is... Sailed a little bit too high, you know. I tell you, that was that was also really close to being an interception by Mitch Klima. As we get a sudden Orchard Park leading Jamestown 21 to seven. Wow! That game in the second quarter. Maybe Orchard Park's getting its second win. Talking about second win, our player, our papers just blew out the window here. Here you go, Sal. Thank you. You're welcome. The paper blew out the window, and it literally landed on a gentleman's head in front of us and stuck. And, and it was we, great because that way we were just able to get it right back from him. And we told him, great catch, and you didn't <laughs> understand that. <laughs> Snap throw. That one's also a little bit out of the reach of the intended target. And that time it was intended for Dante Darienzo, the 5'9 junior tight end. You know, these kind of starts for the for the Depew team here is uh, kind of deflating because you know you're you're up against a oh yeah a bonnet offensive team and you know they want to take their time coming out of the huddle. You don't want to have a fast paced kind of deal with uh, Depew because what you do essentially is get the ball back to Lancaster with more time and that could be your enemy here. And you don't want to have incomplete passes. That does it too. They just right. had two in a row, so they really haven't burned any clock here in two plays. Five seconds, one off the clock, the first two plays. There's a screen pass. Looked to me like the running back was being held in the backfield, but nothing was called. Jeremy Clark, to me, was getting held. But he complained, nothing was called. And the 
Pass fell incomplete. Clark going to the sidelines. He's upset about it. Yeah, the bottom line is that there's a lot of pressure being put on Joe Pagano to uh, to make plays, and sometimes it might be a little errant. Here comes the pressure again. So Yeah, they've done a great job of blocking kicks, rushing kicks. Here comes another opportunity right here. Snap. They come right up the gut, and they almost get to it again. Yeah. That one bounces, and we're going to have a roughing the punter penalty coming up here, I believe. That one, a little bit too much pressure. It lasted too long. And we'll see if they call it a 5 or a 15 or what we're going to have here. Personal foul. That's going to be a, an automatic first down for DPU. Yes, it will be. That's uh, a welcome call for Coach Wilson to get a drive going again. So with 107 left on the clock, DePew will have another opportunity here. They'll move this one up 15 yards, and the ball will be placed at their own 35-yard line. DePew has 32 yards on that one pass, and they also have 32 yards rushing. They have a total of 64 yards. Not too bad, but the half of it came on one play. Right. It's uh, credit to the defense, credit to the pressure. Looks like they're playing it straight here. And Here's Clark. Goes off tackle, gains about a yard. Yeah, we mentioned Andreessen, beginning part of the show. How about, how about this? Uh, <laughs> an offensive tackle playing quarterback, and you might see him later in a football game as a Wildcat quarterback in the red zone. It's incredible. He's, he's one of the fastest kids in the team, and he's probably one of the biggest. If you saw him sitting or standing next to you or next to anybody, he's yep. going to be a huge human being here, and he really does a great job with the, with the Wildcat. 6'1", 225. All of that. Pagano, shotgun, hands it off to Clark. Has some some room, Clark. Steps by a defender, gains across the 40 before he's brought down at the 41. That will probably be the last play of the first quarter. Clock ticking down. We are at 10 seconds left before the end of quarter number one. Lancaster leads this one 22 to nothing. One of the best rivalries in all of West New York has been pretty one-sided so far, but DePew is marching here on Spectrum News, and we'll come back to see what they can do with it in the second quarter. Imagine if you had the power to choose whatever weather you wanted. Sunny and warm? You got it. Lawn needs a little water? No problem. The thing is, it's not possible. With Weather on the Ones, we can't control the weather, but we can give you updates every 10 minutes. So you'll be prepared for whatever weather conditions come your way. Weather on the Ones, only on Spectrum News. No matter how perfect the weather may be, that can change in the blink of an eye. That's why Spectrum News has weather every 10 minutes. When you need the weather, we have the weather. Spectrum News, your 24-hour local news channel, has weather every 10 minutes on the ones. One after, 11 after, 21 after, you get it. Your next local forecast is just a few minutes away. Weather on the ones, only on Spectrum News. I routinely get emails that say you're too liberal or you're too conservative. I find that encouraging because it indicates to me that we're somewhere in the middle, which is what we're aiming for. And we have confidence that viewers have the capability of making their own decisions and taking in a whole wide range of information that we're hopefully providing to them and then subsequently they can determine how they feel and what they want to do about it. And that's our goal, is to inform. Capital Tonight, weekdays at 8 and 11.30 p.m. only on Spectrum News. If you had a magic crystal ball, it would be easy to predict the weather. But magic crystal balls don't exist? Lucky for you, there's Weather on the Ones on Spectrum News. With Weather on the Ones, you get local weather updates every 10 minutes from any device. Mornings, afternoons, or evenings, your forecast is always right around the corner. That's better than a crystal ball. Weather on the Ones, only on Spectrum News. The 
rights to this broadcast have been granted by Section 6, representing more than 90 senior high schools who participate annually in Section 6 sponsored athletic competition. Any rebroadcast or republication of the programming without written consent of Section 6 is strictly prohibited. This is a production of Charter Communications. Sal Capaccio back here with Len Jankowitz at Frank Constantino Sport Complex on the campus of Depew High School. Let's take a look at our first quarter stats. Rushing and running the football about even between these two teams. The difference has been the passing yardage of Lancaster versus one play to Depew, the turnover that resulted in a touchdown as well. Yeah, exactly, Sal. You know what? Uh, we'll, we'll talk about Depew's slow start this season. It kind of mimicked the first quarter against Lancaster. Just permitted too many big plays. Pagano, the quarterback for Depew, rolls right. Throws, has a man, it's caught. And he's written out of bounds by Giordano. It was caught out there by Chad Beersbach. I really like that design. I think maybe Depew needs to do a little bit more of that, getting Pagano out in space. Yeah, he's done that before. You know, it's uh, it's almost a half half roll kind of deal here, and he's thrown to his favorite receiver, who's who's a gifted receiver, and who knows where the, where the sideline is. And that's what you need to do, along with a decent running game, to, to produce some points. And... Sal, getting back to what I mentioned before about the start of the season, Coach Wilson, after those two games that they lost, began to just challenge those kids to dig down and really limit the big plays. And you know what? They went 4-0 from that point. Beersbach, one of the receivers in motion, comes over on the left, just off the edge of the line. It'll be a toss sweep to Clark, who's met right in the backfield by a Lancaster legend. He was met there and dropped by Brett Beto. The 5'11", 180-pound senior. Yeah, he's been looking at some game film because he sees the key to have him come up there and just uh, stop the outside edge, contains it, and the rest of the legends come and clean up what's left over. Again, Sal, just great linebacker play by those three guys we, uh, we mentioned before. Brett, Ben, and Joe have done a... A cameo jab for the Legends all year. Here's a throw. It's Beersbach again. He'll try to get to the edge. He can't. It looks like he might even lost a yard. Guess so who's there again. Third down I'm and sorry. about 16. <laughs> Go ahead. Guess who's there again? I think it was Brett, but a mm -hmm. bunch of people were there. Of course, they're, they're gang tackling, and two guys are better than one. That young man's having a. A great defensive game. So third down and 16. Maybe 15 they're going to call it. Either way, Depew has to get to the 32-yard line of Lancaster. Pagano. Sets up, throws a little swing pass, it's incomplete, it's headed for Clark. Yeah, there's pressure again. That's the thing about that pressure, it's forcing shorter throws, and on third and 15, there's not much you can make up. Yeah, here we come inside. You know, it just forces easy throws, even lateral throws, Sal, to a point where it becomes a task just to get it out of his hand. Lancaster leads 22 to nothing here. Inside 10 minutes left, second quarter. They have come close to blocking a couple kicks. They actually roughed the punter in the last one. <laughs> coach says, I'm not gonna let that happen this time. They didn't send anybody. That's called the ultimate punt safe right there, Coach. I mean, every single person just stood their guy up, did not even move. Little change of pace. Doesn't hurt anybody. Let's take a look around the area here in Western New York High School football tonight. Akron leading Eden 21 to nothing. Clarence has a 7 nothing lead over Hutch Tech that game in the second quarter. Cheektowaga with a 14 nothing lead over Maryville. Big rival game there in Cheektowaga. Boy, the uh, Warriors, they're good. Really good this year again. And a lot of these games, Sal, being played tonight have a huge ramifications for the playoff That's seating right. coming up on Sunday. 
one of that Eden score. You and I were talking before the game. That's one of those schools that, because of uh, dropping football interest, they've had to combine. They're actually Eden North Collins. Um, I believe East Aurora is with Holland, correct? Right. They did that as well. So a lot of, the, a lot of these uh, schools have to do that. Hey, stay tuned to Spectrum News at 11 tonight for Connors and Ferris, first and 10. For 30 minutes, we'll look at highlights from games across Section 6. You can also watch a replay of Connors and Ferris, first and 10, at 8.30 a.m. tomorrow. And it's all right here on Spectrum News. You know, we saw a score that was posted on the screen with Chicktawaga and Maryville. That has a direct bearing on the few seating because uh, depending on who wins the Chicktawaga Maryville game would be either one or two. And then it could affect the few, you know, seating in terms of being either six, seven, or even an eight. So a lot of those games that are being played in that, as mentioned before, will have a, a huge dependence in terms of where, where the few goes for their first playoff game next week. All those schools there, you know, Depew and Maryvale and Alden, it's just so, it, they've just kind of had some great rivals over the last few years, some great games. You know, those those the schools right in the same area there are those, those B schools. Yeah, that's, and the tie-breaking situation you know, goes down to the fourth or fifth determinant. It's really, it's really tight. Still waiting here on another whistle. Might have been some movement here. You talked earlier about the two losses that Depew had to start this season. Two points, Dunkirk, 28 to seven against Albion, but they bounced back, to, bounced back really well. Uh, 30 to six over Springville, 22 to nine over Fredonia, 40 to nothing against Tonawanda. Last week they have a three-point high-scoring shootout victory over Olean, 44-41. On the road, by the way. There's your man, Andreessen, taking the quarterback shotgun snap. And let's see if they call a fumble here. The ball did come out, but now they're gonna say it was at the end of the play. But Andreessen, boy, he took the shotgun snap from inside his own end zone and literally leaped over a pile of defenders. Yeah, that's uh, kind of like having Deion Dawkins be your tailback, <laughs> you know? <laughs> let's see if the ball comes out before he hits the ground here. No, that's close, that was close, but maybe the elbow was down. Snap, he gives it. So now Andreessen is playing quarterback right now. And it is third down and about five. Yeah, I think they're going back to the regular offense to try to convert this. You know, both squads shall have a bunch of seniors. Some more flags come in. The illegal substitution this time against Lancaster. So now legends are a little bit uh, <laughs> disjumbled here. Yeah, I think the... Uh, Not what you want to see. Right, the Wildcat offense in the coming out zone here was uh, difficult to, to have replaced by just a regular offense. Somebody must have... There's Coach Not Rob. caught the call. Now the conversion is a little bit less manageable. Let's see what they do here. It'd be a big turnaround for Depew if they can stop him here and force him to punt. And let's assume they will punt. Snap. Look, throw down the field. Has a man, and it's caught in big first down yardage. The reception made by Nick Mira. Wow, there's that 11th. That junior receiver having a big breakout time here, just wide open. We just can't let that happen if you're Depew. All right, find the middle of the long. zone. Exactly. Somebody wide open down the field. Mansell back in at quarterback, by the way. He delivers that ball right in the money. We kind of take him for granted yeah. here, but he's been, he's been on the money for all those throws. Mansell will throw this one as well. He'll throw out, caught. Spinning away from a tackler and getting close to first down yardage. You see who that is. That is number 21, Kyle Backert. You know, even, even the difference on those sideline throws, Sal, the ball is out of his hand, so the receiver can make some yardage after the catch, which is so important. 
So now a measurement will come up. I said it was close to first down yardage. They don't quite know if he got it. 7.34 left. Looks like Lancaster wants to get aggressive and score again here. At least another touchdown before they have to give it up to Depew. And not that we're getting really close to the end of the half, but they'd like to get one before that is the end of the half. It's a little bit short, so it'll be second down and about a foot. Yeah, even you, less. Uh, Sal, you mentioned the two-headed monster, too, in terms of Lancaster's balanced offense, running, passing. With Hersey back there, it could be a third and long conversion with him breaking a quick one as well as the, as the quick passing game, gaining yardage, too. So you, you really have a tendency not to develop a tendency with this team because they're both equally explosive. So a second down and very short for Lancaster. Mansell gives it off to Hersey, who has the first down, bounces off the defender. He goes out of bounds at around the 39-yard line. Forgive me for not knowing, did Coach Rupp take over right after you? No. Uh, uh, Coach Chris Dixon came in That's right, right after me for a few years, and uh, Coach that. Rupp picked it up last year. Had a, had a great year. But you did coach him. Uh, yeah, back in the day, as I said before, there's a lot of guys on that side. Don't see that. He's a young enough. guy. He's a young guy. He's only 33, <laughs> I think. Well, Head I coach hope. here at Lancaster. Yeah, he's, he's a young guy, but doing a great job. Snap, throw, and the ball was caught. With yeah, his knee was on the ground. I'm glad they blew the whistle there because some guys lay, laid up a little bit after they knew that he was on the ground, and that was caught by number 24, Nick Mira again. Now there's Coach Rupp. You see Sean Brusso on the left in the red. You see Coach Rupp. You coach both of them. You coach a lot of the guys in that staff. What kind of player was Rupp? Uh, terrific. He's, uh, he won a, a sectional championship as a sophomore coming up. He uh, is critical to our to our uh, run at Rich, and uh, consequently for the next couple of years, he really led our team in yardage. And uh, as a captain for a senior, really proud of him. He uh, had a stellar career and went on to Allegheny University. Here's a snap, the give, and running free again is Hersey into the end zone. Another touchdown for the Legends, another touchdown for number 34, Andrew Hersey. So a great run. If we have this on replay, you can take a look and see how his one cut and accelerates after that one cut forces defenders to be, to be still and not be able to be great tacklers. Just a great run by Andrew. Very, very tough for a one-on-one -on -one tackle with a defensive back with Hersey. I mean, he just... That third gear. He changes direction so quickly on that one cut, too. So impressed. Kick coming up here from Kyle Becker. So they have a few guys who can kick. Boy, that one went high, too. Becker drilled that. Here it is. Big gaping hole. Take a look at this cut. Back to the left-hand side and just accelerates. And Sal, he knows where the end zone is. Yeah, it's Sean Miller here who really just didn't have a chance once he put that foot in the ground and moved. Take a look at the run one more time. Big hole. Really, he went untouched when it's all said and done. Sal, going into this game, that young Andrew Hersey had 14 touchdowns. He's got a couple here tonight, including this 44-yarder. 89 yards on seven plays. He has 90 yards here tonight and two scores with 6.33 left in the second quarter. I'm being told he is averaging 13 yards a carry right now for the first half. As I said, big play capability on the ground and in the air really affords you an opportunity to do anything in long yardage situations. You coached in a lot of these games. Did, how tough was it sometimes to kind of make sure, when, when, if you knew you had the better team, to make sure your team was focused and you know didn't get too caught up in the moment and think, hey, you know, we're going crosstown rival here. Anything can happen in these rivalry games. You always have to guard against that, right? Yeah. Because the reason I ask is, 
I was talking with Lancaster coaches before, and you know they felt the team was ready. If they come out here tonight, there's been no distraction for them. No, they they haven't focused on that kind of thing. That the uh, the team has business at hand. There. Here's your right. Look at those drive starts. Oh my goodness. 25, 30, 26, 20. No, even with nine plays, you have to punt the football, even if you started your own 20 and then have a decent drive. That's right, three punts and a fumble. She's not going very well right now in offense for Depew. They like to get something going before the end of the half here to maybe carry themselves in to the second half. And believe me, I've been where Coach Wilson is right now in one of these games, and uh, it's not a comforting thought, but what you have to do is just... Uh, just play one play at a time, and it's difficult really to do that, Sal, because, you know, focus is so important in a football game like this because you look ahead and you never look at the next play. Well, the other plays don't make any difference about the next play. You really have to focus now and just move right ahead, and it's so difficult for these young guys to do that. Quarterback Pagano sets up, gives it off. Nice run here by Cheslinski. Jaselski, excuse me. Jordan has made a living out of this this year, just bouncing outside and making the best out of it. Sometimes he, he gets to the corner and really accelerates. Outstanding season for the Wildcats. 6.01, clock ticking. Chiselski again, and another nice move. Chiselski trying to get to the outside. Boy, I love this kid's shiftiness. Gain first down yardage on that one. That's a nice run. Yeah, it is. You know what? And the good thing about that, even though one person missed a tackle, is those cleanup committee people blow like the linebackers right there. Ben Damiani coming in play. You know, we we talk about people containing the play. People in the alley and people on cutback. Right there, you saw three players in the places they should be in a defensive play, and good results happen. First down and 10. Fresh set of downs here for the Depew Wildcats. Chaselski, he's been the workhorse here so far on this drive. He gains a couple out to the 35 yard line. Chaselski comes into this game with 350 yards rushing, four touchdowns. He's been their bread and butter on the ground. I know, Sal, I don't want to bring up a sore subject here, but talk about Bills football and last week's game against the uh, Bengals. Bontez perfect in terms of his penetration, how he stops zone plays because he just affords to penetrate and there's no place to cut back. A lot of that has been done by the linebackers here. Very similar. Well, pistol formation. Chaselski again, and this time he's cut down. Cut down right away. By number 52, shooting that gap right there. I think it was. Jeff, yep. I have the... Ben Damiani. Ben, there you go, Damiani. You know, that's very similar because you have people that just recognize your keys and just play aggressively and downhill. That's what those three guys do, and they're very, very difficult to get outside of. And certainly, you saw when backs try to cut back, he's there. There's look at Ben Damiani on the season. Fills up a stat sheet. Fills up the middle, too. Sure. Yes, he does. <laughs> Third and nine, 413 left. Second quarter. A little rollout here. This was successful earlier. Let's see if it can be again for Depew. There's a long throw down the field, and it is incomplete because it's out of bounds intended for Biersbach. Yeah, this ran into real estate. Ben Mazur did a good job of containing the quarterback and sending him to a... Uh, a tough throw on the sideline and credit the defense again for forcing another punt. Sal, you're seeing in a little thumbnail print here what Lancaster has done for the previous game of the season. This is what they have done. This is what they have done. They've been explosive. They've shut teams down and get the accelerator down too throughout the game. Almost blocked there by Damiani. Rolls down, and I don't know why the Lancaster player just jumped on it. That's yeah. not something he's probably taught to do, but he did. 
And that was Max Giordano, who usually would know better, I think. Yeah, he thinks he's playing baseball out there. <laughs> yeah, no kidding, right? Boy, you know, Lancaster's doing a nice job to get somebody in there, but you'd think that you might want to just take a step and punt this thing. Yeah. Jaselski took a few steps before he got rid of it. Yeah, I think it was meant to be a rugby punt where you kind of hold on to it a little bit and kind of yep. drive it out of bounds and keep it away from Max, but uh, you're right. The deficit is, is that you keep it in play for the defense to maybe block it. Well, here we go, Sal. Mansell, the quarterback, rolls right, looks. He's going to take it himself, and he's going to step out of bounds just across the 40-yard line. Great little decision there. The receiver was sort of covered. You know, great job in terms of defensive back being there, but he made a good decision. Scramble out of bounds, got positive yardage. Ryan Mansell came into this game with over a thousand yards passing on the season. One of the better statistical quarterbacks in all of Western New York. And was just one of the better and more talented quarterbacks in all of Western New York. He just poses a lot of different problems for defenses because he is so athletic. You saw right there what he can do when things break down as well. Here's the give right up the gut. Another big run here by Hersey. Boy, that play has just been there all night for them. Yeah, and it, you know, he's uh, he's so quick-footed, too. It looks like when he's running, his, <laughs> his feet are moving 100 miles an hour and everybody else isn't. What are they doing there, Coach? Are they trapping guys or just blowing people off the ball? Yeah, well, I, I think there's just some gaping holes up in there, and people are getting lock-on blocks rather than trying to separate themselves off the blocker. Hersey now over 100 yards on the night already. We're not to halftime yet, 108. You know, he doesn't need a lot of room, as you can see, Sal, and he uh, makes those one cuts, and it's difficult for people to make a hit. A little, little trap here to Hersey. This time he gets to the 30, cuts back, 25, and down to the 23-yard line. If we get a chance there to show that back, I don't know if we do, but that was a little guard trap, and that left right. guard just pulled right around the center and gave Hersey enough room. Check it out right here. Boom. Yeah, I call a little G play. Bam. Look at that. That's a great seal. Could be uh, David Gotsa just making the play in the outside, and uh, he doesn't need much room. You know what? He knows when and where to cut back or when to take that little sliver outside. And, uh, you know, it, Sal, it isn't that Lancaster's running a lot of different plays. They're just doing what they do well. Right. Hersey now at 126 and two touchdowns. Here's the throw, and it's caught. Out to the down to the 10 to the 5, diving for the end zone. Unable to get there was Backert, but he does have a first and goal situation set up for the Legends. Kyle Backert turns it around. He's playing some great defense, and now he turns to offense. Nice block right there. Max Giordano's Giordano doing a good job. <laughs> he got two in one play, coach. Yep. Yeah, he's. I think he's playing like this is his <laughs> last few games, so. I think he is too. You're right. Snap, and this is Andrews Dreesen, and he gets down into the end zone. They're gonna call it a touchdown. That's tough to stop. Yeah. It's pretty tough on the Trench Trophy nominee from week two, takes the yeah. ball inside That's and right. runs for, I believe, his ninth touchdown this season. What a versatile, versatile athlete, and uh, Comes from a great family, uh, know both his mom and dad. Just a uh, great wrestler, multi-sport athlete, too, Sal. How about that? Always. Always. Kick is up and good, and we have ourselves a 36 to nothing game here at Depew. Boy, Lancaster has just taken over this game here tonight. There's Hersey. That, I mean, excuse me, that is Andre Andreessen. That is just too tough. Yeah, the little rap play guard comes around and uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of meat in the hole, so to speak. Coach McDowell's term. Now I gotta ask you because you were a high school coach in this area for so long. Now where I come from and I when I did my thing coaching down in Florida, there was a a running clock rule once it got to a certain point. We don't have that here in Western New York. No, we don't. And and, and basically what would happen down there is once it got to thirty five, the losing coach got a had the choice would you like to have a running clock and obviously it's not the necessary you hate saying yes but you have to say yes sometimes because you want to get out of there now i'm just curious your thoughts if you think that 
you know, high school football in Western New York should adopt it. I've done a few games like this. I'm not saying DePue can't come back. We've seen things happen. I'm not saying they can't score some touchdowns. But if things get really out of hand, would that not be something that coaches would rather see? No, I'm all for that, Sal, because sportsmanship should should trump anything going on in terms of the football game. And the running clock would aid the game of, you know, just going a little bit quicker for, for unfortunately, a team that maybe can't mount a threat. Well, we've seen that ball bounce on kickoffs way too many times for Depew, and they've almost lost it a couple times. That one, they grab, get it to the 30-yard line, they'll have first down there. 2.31 left. Yeah, now, you're Coach Wilson, now what do you do? You know, like I said, I've been in this spot. You know, you, you know, you, you mentally, you're kind of beat up a little bit in the first half. You know, it, you got two minutes left to go, you know, but, and again, it sounds crazy, Sal, but it's just, you know, the, the big plays come one play at a time. You just have to grind it out. You know, you, you're not going to help yourself out by having a turnover here. You just have to keep the ball, keep the ball out of Lancaster's hands and just make a drive. Pagano goes back to the shotgun, hands it off. Clark is the ball carrier. Gains a few. Actually, I'm going to say it was only about a one-yard gain there after being knocked down. You know, I did mention before, Sal, is that both these teams are pretty heavily favored in terms of the senior lineup. I know Lancaster has a couple of underclassmen on the, on the offensive line, and... Uh, couple of receivers that are underclassmen but by and large both teams are heavily laid in uh, in seniors and uh, pretty good leadership on both sides there's the give to Clark again Clark trying to get to the outside he gets over the 30 yard line the 32 is where they'll stop him so now it'll be second down and eight third down and eight excuse me 137 the clock is ticking Dominic Ciarmani traveling down the line of scrimmage along with Joe and made a made a key stop. Uh, it's, uh, it's a credit to Lancaster for having this come this way. They're, and they're subbing a lot of people in and out on the defensive line too, Sal, just to keep them fresh. We talked about those minutes that those kids got in those games in the second half. That's right. It's paying off now. Absolutely. Snap. Pagano looks, throws, has a man. It's caught. Turning up field and gaining first down yardage on a nice effort there at the end. It was DiRenzo. And Dante, the 5'9 junior, does a nice job to gain the first down after being wrapped up there close to those sticks. Good job here. Yeah, good little play. Dante DiRenzo is the son of uh, their defensive coordinator. Great young athlete, only a junior. Plays both sides of the ball. Credit to the Wildcat team. Good so player. First down and 10 at the 40 now. This is Clark trying to get to the outside. He can't, but he bounces off a couple of legends, and now he's driven back even further. That may be the last play before the end of the half. We'll see, but in any event, at halftime, we will send it back to our Spectrum Studios. Kevin Carroll standing by. He's going to have some highlights and thoughts. We'll show you what's going on, and we'll come back here. We'll give you highlights from this game as well before we head to the second half of action. Lancaster in firm control here as the clock winds down. We are inside 10 seconds, and Brian Wilson's going to say, let's get to the locker room. Let's regroup. Lancaster feeling very good about themselves. Depew right now, however, on a night where they take on their rivals in front of a big crowd has got a lot of work to do in the second half. We'll go to halftime with the Lancaster Legends leading the Depew Wildcats 36 to nothing here at Depew High School. When we come back, we'll throw it back to Kevin Carroll back at our Spectrum News Studios for a look around the area and highlights as well. Imagine if you had the power to choose whatever weather you wanted. Sunny and warm? You got it. Lawn needs a little water? No problem. The thing is, it's not possible. With Weather on the Ones, we can't control the weather, but we can give you updates every 10 minutes. So you'll be prepared for whatever weather conditions come your way. Weather on the Ones, only on Spectrum News. 
No matter how perfect the weather may be, that can change in the blink of an eye. That's why Spectrum News has weather every 10 minutes. When you need the weather, we have the weather. Spectrum News, your 24-hour local news channel, has weather every 10 minutes on the ones. One after, 11 after, 21 after, you get it. Your next local forecast is just a few minutes away. Weather on the ones, only on Spectrum News. I routinely get emails that say, you're too liberal or you're too conservative. I find that encouraging because it indicates to me that we're somewhere in the middle, which is what we're aiming for. And we have confidence that viewers have the capability of making their own decisions and taking in a whole wide range of information that we're hopefully providing to them and then subsequently they can determine how they feel and what they want to do about it. And that's our goal, is to inform. Capital Tonight, weekdays at 8 and 11.30 p.m. only on Spectrum News. If you had a magic crystal ball, it would be easy to predict the weather. But magic crystal balls don't exist? Lucky for you, there's Weather on the Ones on Spectrum News. With Weather on the Ones, you get local weather updates every 10 minutes from any device. Mornings, afternoons, or evenings, your forecast is always right around the corner. That's better than a crystal ball. Weather on the Ones, only on Spectrum News. All right, hey everybody, welcome to Friday Night Matchup Halftime Show presented by Monroe Muffler and Brake. Plenty of outstanding student athletes we have here in Western New York making the most of their time in the classroom too. Now earlier this evening we honored our Spectrum Scholar Athlete of the Week. Uh, let's go back to Sal Capaccio. Sal Capaccio here with our Scholar Athlete of the Week here on Spectrum News. He is Dylan Liss of Depew High School. He's a member of the boys varsity football and lacrosse teams. And Dylan is a scholar athlete possessing a 96.3 grade point average, an SAT score of 1390. He's a member of the National Honor Society. He currently takes college level classes in biology, chemistry, calculus, anatomy, and physiology. Dylan's active in school as a member of the Varsity D Club, Donate Life Club, and the Link and the Link Crew Leadership Club. Outside of school, Dylan volunteers with Kip Gives, Gives Smile and a University of Pediatric Dentistry, coaches in Lancaster Youth uh, at the Lacrosse Program, and volunteers at stress level, level relief events with his therapy dog. That's a whole heck of a lot, and that's why he's winning this award. And right now, I'm going to turn it over to State Senator Pat Gallivan. Uh, I am thrilled to be here dealing with you and your parents to present you this award uh, from Spectrum as their Scholar Athlete of the Week. I also have a proclamation from the State Senate. Um, I'm really proud that you live in our district. I'm sure your parents are proud, and I wish you the best of luck tonight and in your future. Thank there you. you go. Hey, Dylan, I have a question for you. How do you balance your athletic and academic life so well in, in your everyday side of things? Um, just takes a lot of hard work. Um, Got to take advantage of all the free time that I have. Um, can't slack off, can't procrastinate. Um, if I need help, I have to go talk to my teachers and everything. Um, as soon as I get home from practice, got to do all my homework and everything. Well, it doesn't sound like you have a lot of free time like that, and that's why you win this award. Congratulations. Thank you. All right, that is our Scholar Athlete of the Week here on Spectrum News, Dylan Liss of Depew High School. Sal, uh, and congrats to Dylan. Uh, we'll get back to the game in just a bit. Casey Bortnick's going to get us caught up on all the day's big news. All right, really one big story everybody's following today. Kevin, thank you very much for continuing to follow tonight's breaking news we've been following all evening for you. Authorities are expected to continue searching overnight for a missing Buffalo police officer as we have been following this breaking news all evening long. Spectrum News reporter Sarah Blazonis joins us now from the scene where a multi-agency effort is underway to try to locate this missing police officer. Sarah, Sarah, what can you tell us right now? Yeah, Casey, unfortunately, not a lot of new information here from the scene, although the search does continue. I'm going to give you a look at what we can see right now from our vantage point here at Broderick Park, which, as you can see, as of right now, isn't a whole lot. The river is just absolutely black right now. You might be able to see some blue flashing lights out there on the water. Those are the rescue boats that we were showing you video of all afternoon. Unless they're close to the shore, that's really all we can see of them. So imagine what these crews are going through out there looking for a person in just this black water. We're still occasionally seeing 
Some helicopters fly overhead, although not as much and as often as we were earlier in the day. Now, Buffalo police say the 34 year old officer went missing in the Niagara River in Buffalo around one this afternoon. The officer was training with the department's underwater recovery team when he disappeared. Multiple agencies across western New York responded to the water rescue search. At this point, it is still a rescue mission. The search is underway and we will be here as long as it takes to locate the officer. We also spoke with Carol Anderson, who's an experienced scuba diver. She is um, with Phoenix Scuba and Water Sports in Lackawanna, and she says the average air cylinder is about 80 cubic feet. And depending on how deep you are in the water and what your breathing is like, how well you can control that, that air can last for about an hour and a half. And as we mentioned, there are several law enforcement agencies from around the area helping with this search. They're all talking to each other, all on a marine channel. They have a game plan out there, what they're doing. I know the sheriff's boat, I know the city of Tonawanda, I know Grand Island Fire, they all have side, uh, side scan sonar on their boats. And the boat lieutenant did tell me that's what they're operating under right now. So, so all these boats are communicating with each other in the water right now on a marine channel. So they've got a game plan what they're doing right now. Now, we've also been told by officials that Canadian law enforcement is also helping out with this search, which we expect it to continue for the foreseeable future. We're also expecting an update from law enforcement coming up later this evening, so we'll let you know what we learn from that. For now, reporting in Buffalo, Sarah Blazonis, Spectrum News. Sarah, thank you. Authorities in Niagara County are investigating after drugs were found at a Lewiston Porter school. Police say marijuana and psychedelic mushrooms were found during a random canine search on Friday morning. District officials would not say whether or not they were found at the middle school or the high school. Five surrounding law enforcement agencies helped out in the search. Officials say that's due to the size of the building. Officers say they met with the suspects and their families, though they don't expect on filing any charges. An Amherst man pleads guilty to stealing more than $300,000 from an area medical facility. 55-year-old William Gajewski pleaded guilty to grand larceny, forgery, and criminal tax fraud. From March 1st of 2015 to December 31st, 2016, Gajewski admitted to stealing $318,000 from Buffalo Rheumatology and Medicine in Orchard Park while he was serving as an office manager. Gajewski forged documents for false expenses and deposited money into his own personal checking account. He also failed to pay more than $11,000 in back taxes. Gajewski faces up to 15 years in prison. He's expected to appear in court for sentencing in January. University at Buffalo police are investigating reports of a man committing a lewd act in front of a 14 year old boy. They say the incident occurred at around 6 Thursday night in the men's sauna at Alumni Arena. University police say the suspect is a man in his 40s with colorful tattoos on his shoulders. And with information should call investigators at 716 645 Two, 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 two. All right, that does it for your Friday night matchup halftime news brief. It was brief. Let's head now to the Weather Center for a quick check of the forecast. Here's Todd Kirk. Well, it looks like it's going to be a pretty good Saturday for us, uh, all things considered for this time of year. We are going to find a lot of clouds and the chance for some scattered showers coming in later in the day, but high temperatures are going to be running well above average. Now, if you want to get out this evening, not much going on. We've got a lot of clouds, some occasional breaks in that overcast. And of course, uh, the risk of a stray shower is with us. But again, most of the time in most areas will stay dry. Lows in the Buffalo area tonight down in the mid 50s. Tomorrow, low 70s. That's more than 10 degrees above average. Even in Jamestown and across the southern tier, temps tonight settle in the 50s, some patchy dense fog. And tomorrow, a decent day. Highs also above average, peaking from 65 to 70. All right, Todd, I like the sound of that. That's it for me, Kevin Carroll, and he's in studio, but he'll be in studio coming up after the game. Friday night matchup halftime show is presented by Monroe Muffler Break. It continues after the break. Stick around. Imagine if you had the power to choose whatever weather you wanted. Sunny and warm? You got it. Lawn needs a little water? No problem. The thing is, 
It's not possible. With weather on the ones, we can't control the weather, but we can give you updates every 10 minutes. So you'll be prepared for whatever weather conditions come your way. Weather on the ones, only on Spectrum News. No matter how perfect the weather may be, that can change in the blink of an eye. That's why Spectrum News has weather every 10 minutes. When you need the weather, we have the weather. Spectrum News, your 24-hour local news channel, has weather every 10 minutes on the ones. One after, 11 after, 21 after, you get it. Your next local forecast is just a few minutes away. Weather on the ones, only on Spectrum News. I routinely get emails that say, you're too liberal or you're too conservative. I find that encouraging because it indicates to me that we're somewhere in the middle, which is what we're aiming for. And we have confidence that viewers have the capability of making their own decisions and taking in a whole wide range of information that we're hopefully providing to them and then subsequently they can determine how they feel and what they want to do about it. And that's our goal, is to inform. Capital Tonight, weekdays at 8 and 11.30 p.m. only on Spectrum News. If you had a magic crystal ball, it would be easy to predict the weather. But magic crystal balls don't exist? Lucky for you, there's Weather on the Ones on Spectrum News. With Weather on the Ones, you get local weather updates every 10 minutes from any device. Mornings, afternoons, or evenings, your forecast is always right around the corner. That's better than a crystal ball. Weather on the Ones, only on Spectrum News. Back here at Depew High School, Lancaster leads Depew 36 to nothing at the half. It's really been all Lancaster so far this half. Let's take a look at how we got here to this point. It really started off with Lancaster striking first early. It was a long pass, a 51-yarder to Max Giordano, who walked into the end zone after he got by the defense. And then on the extra point, I think this was an actual design fake. Absolutely it was. And it was number 15. Ryan uh, Sokolowski actually getting the two-point conversion there. Then it was Andrew Hersey. Andrew with a 30-yard TD run to put Lancaster up two scores. The extra point made that 15 to nothing. Giordano, Max on defense. How about this? A big strip by John Rogowski, and Max picks it up, reverses field, gets two blocks along the way, absolutely huge blocks, as he takes it down the sideline for another score for Lancaster. And that's really when everything opened up because Depew was actually moving the ball there. Took everything right out of Depew as far as what they had going. Then you have Hersey getting back involved again. Another long TD run. This kid has over 100 yards already in the first half for Lancaster. He scores right there. And one more for Lancaster. This from the big guy, John Andreessen. And then they have a 36 to nothing lead after that. Touchdown right there by Andreessen. Our halftime stats are brought to you by Monroe Muffler and Brake. Don't let car trouble stand in your way. Monroe, stay on the road. The rushing yards, the passing yards, really true to form for Lancaster, Coach. They are balanced. That's what we talked about with this team. 142, 144, you can't get really much more balanced than that. Only 100 total yards for Depew on the defensive side. Look at that average yards per play for Lancaster compared to Depew. All right, 36 to nothing, the score. It is halftime here. And we are going to take a timeout. And when we come back, we'll have the second half for you at the Pew High School with the Pew Wildcats trailing the Lancaster Legends 36 to nothing. Imagine if you had the power to choose whatever weather you wanted. Sunny and warm, you got it. Lawn needs a little water? No problem. The thing is, it's not possible. With weather on the ones, we can't control the weather, but we can give you updates every 10 minutes. So you'll be prepared for whatever weather conditions come your way. Weather on the ones, only on Spectrum News. No matter how perfect the weather may be, that can change in the blink of an eye. That's why Spectrum News has weather every 10 minutes. When you need the weather, we have the weather. 
Spectrum News, your 24-hour local news channel, has weather every 10 minutes on the ones. One after, 11 after, 21 after, you get it. Your next local forecast is just a few minutes away. Weather on the ones, only on Spectrum News. I routinely get emails that say, you're too liberal or you're too conservative. I find that encouraging because it indicates to me that we're somewhere in the middle, which is what we're aiming for. And we have confidence that viewers have the capability of making their own decisions and taking in a whole wide range of information that we're hopefully providing to them and then subsequently they can determine how they feel and what they want to do about it. And that's our goal, is to inform. Capital Tonight, weekdays at 8 and 11.30 p.m. only on Spectrum News. If you had a magic crystal ball, it would be easy to predict the weather. But magic crystal balls don't exist? Lucky for you, there's Weather on the Ones on Spectrum News. With Weather on the Ones, you get local weather updates every 10 minutes from any device. Mornings, afternoons, or evenings, your forecast is always right around the corner. That's better than a crystal ball. Weather on the Ones, only on Spectrum News. Friday Night Matchup on Spectrum News is brought to you in part by Monroe Muffler Brake. Don't let car trouble stand in your way. Monroe, stay on the road. 36 to nothing here at Depew. Lancaster with a commanding lead. lead, lead, lead. The number two the number team two. in the uh, entire state of New York. Lancaster in the latest poll showing why they are tonight with a 36-0 lead over the Depew Wildcats. Let's take a look at some other scores around the region, some Section 6 scores coming at you. Orchard Park now with a 21-14 lead over Jamestown. Cheektowaga with a big 21-6 lead over Maryville. That has huge implications. We'll talk about that again. Southwestern 7-3 over Cassadag Valley, Valley Falconer. Speaking of alums here at Spectrum, how about uh, Southwestern um, head coach? Oh, yeah. It, and... Um, his name is J.U. J.U. Colcrick. Excuse right. me, I know that. He's a good friend of mine. Uh, West Seneca East over West Seneca West, 20 to 19. That's a big game right there oh, going on in West. West is one. undefeated, looking to win that division. Williamsville East is trailing Grand Island, 14 to nothing at the half. It is Frontier, 14. Hamburg, nothing. Also at the half. Clarence has a 13-6 lead over Hutch Tech in the third quarter. Sweet Home leading Williamsville North, 27 to 12. North looking to go undefeated. <laughs> this is what Week Seven is all about, though, isn't it, Coach? Yeah, Amazing. No. Some of these scores exactly. from around the area. But a couple of those games we just talked about. Yes, J.U. Colcrick, sorry. Good friend of mine, and his name just escaped me, and I apologize. But uh, Southwestern did a great job with that Southwestern uh, team. But how about the West score? They're losing their rival East by a point. They're looking to go undefeated. They're looking to, you know, take the division, get right. back to the playoffs as they already clinched a playoff spot. And then same thing with North and Sweet Home. Well, the game's not over yet. Let's give them credit. But uh, you're right. Matt Myers, the uh, quarterback of West, has elevated that whole program. Mike Bastola is, uh, you know, re really basking in the limelight now with those players. But credit East for keeping it close. And that's what we talked about before, Sal. If you want to make an upset, keep it close. You know, grind those positions out and get it done. One more score to pass along to you. A lot of you in West New York are interested. The Syracuse Orange are playing the number one team in the nation and the defending national champion Clemson Tigers up at the Carrier Dome tonight, a Friday night game. And they are leading as they are going to have a minute and 30 left before halftime. Syracuse leading Clemson 17 to 14 behind Dino Babers coaching that team led by Eric Dungy. You don't happen to be a, secure, a Syracuse alum, are you? Uh, I am you know, a fan too, a fan too. Okay, let's take a poll over here, see how many people are Syracuse. <laughs> oh, there's a few hands up here. But. All right, so now we have... So the kick will take place at the 40-yard line. Lefty boots the ball down to the 12, 15 yard line and they run all the way around here by Giordano. This is a design kickoff return to the right and Giordano said, I'm gonna go right. Couple of flags come down and Giordano goes down to the 40, to the 30. Giordano opening up the second half with a long kick return for a touchdown, but I think this one's coming back. 
I think it is. You know what? And it was just unfortunate because that was just sheer will. I mean, it was a, a, a right return and kick to the left hash mark. Incredible return for Nott. Credit Max for that with great effort. So the kicker, I don't know if it was Wilson or Beach. They have two kickers that, that kicked off. Puts a foot into it down to the around the 15 yard line on the left half, left sideline. Wasn't even the hash, the <laughs> sideline. You're right. And Giordano says, "Well, coach called return right, so I'm going right." And he ran all the way across the field, <laughs> up the sideline for a touchdown. But unfortunately for him, it's coming back. That would have been his third touchdown. And by the way, that would have been the hat trick, coach. He has an offensive and a defensive touchdown. That would have given him the special teams touchdown. Yeah, it's incredible, incredible night for him developing already. But usually when people kick that ball so far to left. Camera didn't pick it up. Usually they take it up the left hash. Right. right. But he chose. There was the There's clip the right the there. Back. That was a block in the back. And uh, it wasn't a hole. It was just. Uh, but this is just sheer effort. Great block right there to spring him. And. Well. Starts a little bit further back. And now here's a chance for Depew to capitalize. Take a look at where Lancaster has started drives. A much different than where Depew has. 35, 43, their own 10, and then their own 38. Right. Depew's been backed up inside their 30 almost every time. Ryan Mansell throws, and it is caught! Out near midfield. Big catch right there by Brian Martin. Yeah, he's a junior, just a, just a great target for Ryan Mansell, he's, uh, he's got a few TDs. He's got five TDs already this year, and they've just been a big play. It's just like that, Sal, where he uh, breaks through, bends that cover two route inside the safety, and... So if you thought Lancaster would come out and just sit on the ball, because <laughs> they have a 36-0 lead, you thought wrong. Yeah, he's, he's quite a weapon. They use him a lot. They're gonna throw again. This one's caught. Out of bounds right at midfield. I think we're subbing some players in here. Yeah, I don't have a number on 16 there, but that's who caught the ball, and he gained about three yards. So Mansell, now let's say uh, we we'll get you some numbers on Mansell when we get a chance. Boy, I'm impressed with Mansell, though. He is, um, he's accurate, you know, and down the field accurate, Coach. Like, it, he's... These passes he's thrown down the seam, down the middle of the field, he's putting it on guys. Yeah, and the, probably his best forte is being cerebral and making sure he makes the right call at the right time. There's a run. It's Hersey. Hersey cut back, and he's going to go back to the middle of the field again, or at least towards that way, and he's down at the 13-yard line. Another big run by the running back. Pretty incredible cut here at the line of scrimmage. If uh, this goes in replay, I think he made a, an eight-yard cut and just went around left end. Take a look at this, Sal. Look at this lateral move wow. here. And the boys, the tackler, just straight up. I mean, he doesn't give kids chances. Yeah, and, and the person he uh, he baited straight up is Jordan Chaselski, who was a pretty good defensive player himself. There goes Hersey, and he's going to walk into the end zone. Andrew Hershey with his third score of the night. Makes it 42 to nothing, Legends. I don't know if I can count that high. 17 touchdowns in the season, and he's entering into the playoff here. One incredible year for Andrew Hersey. Wow. Andrew Hersey, 42 to nothing after that score. And that, you know, a lot of his runs just been similar. He gets up the gut and he just makes one cut, as you've been saying all night, and he doesn't get touched after that. There's the kick, gets up, and it is good. That one by Kyle Beckert. So 43 nothing score here at the Pew. And you look back at this rivalry over the years, you don't get many like this. You don't get many that are blowouts as far as the score is concerned. You look at some of the some of the games. In fact, I'm looking at some of the uh, scores put up late last year. Lancaster did score 51. It was a 51 to 14 game. They uh. scored 41 the year before. They've had another 41 on there. I'm looking at some of the higher scores throughout the history. But that's it. This is right now, from what I can tell, the second highest point output ever, only to last year for Lancaster. Yeah, in this they've rival. been a, 
a scoring juggernaut. We go back to my year, poor Coach Foyle, who really started this whole thing. He's on the sideline over there. This is Coach Rupp. But uh, back in my year, 67 and 68, look at this. The Pew winning both games. And by the way, Sal, as you would say, by the way. 13-6 uh, six and 6 nothing. Yeah, let's not echo that too Man. loud here. But anyway, how about this? A player that was on Lancaster's squad the next year transfers to the Pew and scores a winning touchdown 6 nothing at Lancaster. My goodness. Yeah, my goodness is right. I think we said something other than my goodness. Probably. Probably. But, but talk about people within the community scoring touchdowns on you. That's a, almost <laughs> a felony around here. Right. But it happened. There's the catch on the short kickoff, and that was Beersbach, I believe. Getting up on the pilot. It's not. It is number 16, Dorenzo. In fact, I don't know whether or not I should mention this on the cable network here, but you know what? If Jack Kessler's out there, I hope he's listening. And is that I who it was? Feel, yeah, is that his name? Was. I was going to ask you his name, but I didn't know. Yeah. You take a look at what DePew's done or hasn't done tonight. Those four punts, a fumble, and the end of the half, they've only had drive plays on their drives. Five, three, four, nine, five, and four, as you see. So, Jack, people still remember you. For what you did there. Yeah. I'm sure he's not really feeling shame about it, and there's a batted down pass. Incomplete. But you take a look at this rivalry. It really is. It's been a it's been a kind of a rivalry of runs. When you look at the winners and losers, each team has gone on a run. You know, Lancaster's had their fair share of runs, the Pews had their fair share of runs. Right now, we're in a Lancaster run of the last two, and it's looking like it's gonna be three here tonight. But the Pew did have four of five just previous to that. You know, actually, in the last 10 years, it's been really five and five. You know, right. people think it's skewed one way or another, but believe me, I've been in on the, on the losing ends of these battles, but it's, uh, you know, you, this rivalry uh, week, Sal, is just something that it's it's so, from the outside, it's difficult to understand, but from the inside, it's, it's difficult to explain because of all the pageantry and everything involved with the game. One thing I can guarantee that, if there are people out there that have played in this game, you will never, ever forget the game that you played in as a senior. Right. And every time this game is replayed, like, like say, tonight, you relive those, those times, you know. And for the people watching that never played in the game, all I recommend is that you just appreciate the pride and, and celebrate the whole week with everybody because it's homecoming. It's a homecoming dance, a pageantry. The band gets involved. The whole community kind of involves itself in this whole game. It's a great week. I, I'm looking over some of these scores. What happened in 1983? DePue won the game 3-2, to two, Coach. 3-2. to two. Uh, right, Did they play hockey one year instead of football out here? Well, Sal, so we... Uh, <laughs> I know DePue won that game 3-2, to two, and it was a, a mud bath. It was on this, you know, I believe it was on this field, and had the safety, I and mean, you could tell by the score, it wasn't a vaunted spread offense, so right. to speak, here, and just a field goal won it at the end. There have been some dramatic victories, believe me. Uh, teams are undefeated coming in into the game. The, the players knew that even if they had a poor season, they had a Depew game to bail them out. Or the Lancaster game, depending on what side you're on. Long punt, nice punt right there. He's going to be down inside the one-yard line early. Great job there. But right now, as the score stands, for historic purposes, we'll let you know, if the score stands right now the way it is, this would be the largest margin of victory in this particular rivalry for either school. 43 to nothing, 43 points. Neither team has ever beaten the other by that wide margin of victory. So just for historic purposes, if this stands, that's what we're looking at tonight. And then again, the, uh, the sportsmanship on both sides right. has to be maintained. And, you know, what we're hoping for is that uh, you know, we get out of Dodge alive here because we have playoffs sale coming up next week. Yes, we do. Here's a snap. Some nice moves to take it up the field. And I think maybe a new quarterback in here for Lancaster. We'll see. It is number 13. It is Gianluca Fulcinetti. Sal, it's just did up I, your alley, isn't it? Did I say that right? Yeah. I think I did. With Gianluca Fulcinetti. With perfect. I love it. Perfect. I even had to do the I had to do the hand signals with it <laughs> when I was saying it up here in the booth, folks. Oh, his family's his family is just thrilled with that pronunciation. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great. Good for 
You know Kirkland everybody Park. in Lancaster. Do you know the family? No, I don't. No, I don't. I, I, I'm not acquainted with the young man. I see him at practice. He's doing a great job with the team. You know, he's been in, too, on some duty late in the game, certainly when, you know, the the game's been out of hand. He's right. handled himself really well. He re really throws a nice football. But this is what we talked about with some of these guys getting some of these opportunities because you just don't know. Maybe in a playoff week, maybe there's an injury and he has to come in and play. These guys getting, look at the, I mean, look at the, the time he's coming in. There's nine minutes when he comes in left in the second half. That's valuable time for not only him, but other players. Yeah, the good and bad of scores being thwarted on uh, one quarter. side That's right. is uh, just, you, you know, to gel as a team, Sally, you have to suffer a little of the adversity to, to, to bring in the ranks, so to speak, here. You know, and Lancaster hasn't. The illegal motion, illegal shift called here, so it'll go against Lancaster. They'll march it back a little bit. But yeah, nine minutes left, excuse me, in the third quarter. So they have plenty of time here for some of these players to really get some valuable experience, as we've said. And you, know, you go on to these state playoffs, it becomes tough. It's a war of attrition a lot of times as you go on into playing in November. Snap, Fulcinetti looking, pumps, throws, has a man, it's caught. And out to the 20-yard line, a first down gain right there by the receiver, Tyler Sokolowski. So, Lancaster, to you, would be the, you know, team that really, odds on favorite, I guess, to win their section to get, you know, newer field. Obviously, anything can happen. We know that. It is football. It is sports. But... They shouldn't really be threatened as much as maybe some of the other teams in other classifications the way they're playing, right? Well, you know what? I think Williamsville North, Orchard Park, Jamestown have something to say about that. I've learned enough to know that uh, right. you can't decide an outcome before it's really played on turf, grass, <laughs> wherever they play the game. But uh, certainly, you know, if Lancaster takes care of business, they've proved that, you know, they can be a, a viable force in double A. And I think uh, the coaches have, have kind of grounded those players too to know that uh, you know any given day anything can happen believe me I've been there and I can't you know those those coaches on that staff a lot of them have been around me to know that uh, the number one thing you want to leave with with the team that you're playing is that you're going to leave sportsmanlike and leave with class and uh, I believe those guys do it with these guys and uh, they've shown it in the past too. And here's another long run by Lancaster getting free is the ball carrier, Brandon Wingard. Wingard down to the eight yard line before he's brought down. If it's not one, it's another. I mean, they just come coming at you in waves. Doesn't matter what the jersey number, what the name. Yeah, Wingard has some fresh legs. You know, uh, Percy's on the bench, but here's a guy that can take it to the house and waiting for his chance and why not? In the big stage like the Lancaster Depew game. So 43 to nothing, Lancaster has the lead and with 6.58 remaining here in the third quarter, they're knocking on the door again. There's a fumble and the legends jump on it. Well, we got a little extracurriculars after that, but kids will get up, walk back, but no, they did not jump on it. They're gonna give it to Depew. Looked to me like Lancaster jumped right on it, but Depew actually was the team that came up with it. Let's see, there's a missed exchange from the shotgun. Looked like the ball carrier from the previous play, Wingard, had it, but then it was wrestled away from him, and a nice job doing that by Tim Steiner, the 6'3", 220-pound senior defensive lineman. There's Steiner, the number 75, jumping in. Well, here we go with the Pew now. Um, you know, another thing too, Coach Wilson at halftime, you're telling your team just to take one play at a time, and it's so difficult after what these guys have gone through this year. They've won four games in a row, and as we mentioned before, two games could have gone their way very easily by a better half and a couple of points going their way. DePue has a, has a good football team, Sal, and the kind of thing that Coach Wilson wants to do right now is that, uh, look, get him out of this game, and we have a playoff week coming up. That's they right. They have to get ready 
for their playoff opponent, no matter who it is. It could be, Ch you know, Chicktawaga, Maribel, whoever finishes theirs, perhaps. You've seen it for weeks now. We're airing a special 30-minute edition of Capital Tonight with Lids Benjamin. Friday's at 5.30 with a re-air at 11.30. Capital Tonight featuring candidates in local races and your elected officials in Washington and Albany right here on Spectrum News. But as I was saying, I think Coach has to just kind of capitalize on successes. And you look at his score right now, it's so swayed. Take a look at the around the yeah. area, too. 28-14, Orchard Park leading Jamestown right now in the third quarter. Cheetawaga holding on against Maryville, 21-14, but the Flyers are coming back in that one. Grand Island, 17-7 over Williamsville East. So some interesting scores going on here tonight. You know, we know the score is one-sided over here, but we see uh, both sides kind of assisting people off the ground. You know, a lot of these guys know each other, Sal. Yes. From, from basketball leagues that they play together. They, Heck, they see, at the mall, they see each other at the mall <laughs> probably on a daily basis. Oh, uh, they see each other daily. I mean, they're friends of each other. They yeah. know what's going on, and it's uh, that's what the game's all about, though. It's a, it, it's, a, it's a shared community game where everybody kind of highlights the glamour of the whole week. There's the give to Clark. He's going to try and get around the end. He can't. Four-yard gain there, and with 5.38 remaining, Depew has a third down and three. Uh, as we mentioned before, Sal Lancaster is kind of subbing different guys in there on defense. But again, they have fresh legs too, and they're getting some great experience. Snap, here's a throw, has a man. Oh, and it's incomplete, boy. Number five, Sean Miller, the junior wide receiver, was running free down the seam, but they just couldn't connect. Sean Miller is one of the leading tacklers on defense for the Wildcat defense. 35 tackles, couple interceptions, Sal. Had a pretty good year. Punning situation here. Chiselski stands at his own five. He'll do the rugby style kick here. Gets that one way up in the air. Bounces on his own side of the field, but a nice punt. And down at the 43-yard line. So it'll be first and 10 there. Brian Wilson still coaching. Got to coach to the end. And, you know, at this point, you get your kids in there that are playing, and you, you tell them it's still a football game. You take it one play at a time, and you play it like it's 0-0, zero, zero, and you just keep, you keep doing what you got to do. Yeah, that present moment focus. Yeah, I know. Third, how about that? 13 for 13. Amazing. Wow. Can you do things 13, 13 times for 13. and get 13 bullseyes? Incredible. That's an incredible night. I mean, I don't think I've ever seen that in high school football. Yeah, 13 of 13 throwing the football. He's an incredible young man and uh, comes from a great family. Another fumble on the play. Falsinetti, he dropped it, but it looks like the Legends recovered there. We're giving a baseball update. We'll listen to it here. We got it. No score. Yanks Astros game one tonight. Here's the fumble by Falsinetti. Gets on the ground. That's one thing, you know, as you know, obviously, better than anybody up here. No matter what the score is, there are always things you can talk about learning from. There are always things you can talk about correcting, always things you can get better at. That's so far one thing we've seen tonight. The backup group for Lancaster has not secured the ball. Right, exactly. That's something that will be addressed, I'm sure. Short run there. Wingard with 4.07 left and the clock ticking.
You know, uh, going back to the Bills, Sal, because I know that's your bread and butter, so to speak. Uh, you deal with them every every week about process over outcome, Coach McDermott's philosophy. The same thing going on here with Coach Wilson's team. I mean, the process of the whole season has gone very well because of this, this outcome hasn't been what he wanted to, but slumps will occur. You just have to stay with the process. Don't waver from it. And he's got to just do it and work for next week because you want to get out of here without any injuries and just continue that great season that they had in Class B. Yeah, you know, we... <laughs> Sean McDermott, people joke and make fun of him even sometimes about how, how often he talks about the process, the process, the process. It really is, though. You have to have big picture in mind. You have to stick to that process, whatever it is. And it's tough when you see 43 to nothing on the scoreboard, but Tapu will fight another day. They'll have a game next week. They're going to play. They're still, their season is still alive, and next week's a new game. They may play this Lancaster team again. And as they mentioned, those seniors on that squad are the first group of people other than the coach that has to bring this guy next to you right together and let's fight the fight. Oh, almost. Dylan would like to hand that one back too. He's uh How about that kid? You know who that is? That's Dylan List. That's our scholar athlete. Exactly. We honored him before the game. Yep. And at halftime, as you saw. Watch Dylan right here. Has a chance, steps in front of it. He's mad at himself. Yeah, just the frustration the whole team probably has for the night. He is a very, very bright young man, has a 96 grade point average, SATs at 1390, National Honor Society. Well-deserving young man. Met his parents before the game. Very proud, obviously. 244 left, a run around the edge, and Cheslinski is trying to get free. He can't. Cheselski, excuse me. I'm looking ahead to the state playoffs here for Lancaster. The current state rankings, they are number two. Troy, out of section two, yep. is the number one team. And you have your usuals like New Rochelle, who are always there. Canisius is ranked in the class double A. Mm -hmm for the Monsignor Martin Association. Well, like I said, Sal, before the Section 5 teams kind of right. show up. Oh. There's a ball that should have been intercepted, and it's not. Yeah, before uh, teams like Webster Shorter, Pittsburgh, Victor, the teams out in Section 5 that uh, will be waiting with uh, open arms probably for a Section 6 representative. The teams in this Pittsburgh would be the highest ranked Section uh -huh. 5 team in AA. They're currently 10th in the state. And Victor's just a couple of yes. slots behind him. So, Class AA isn't decided yet. Coach Rupp knows about what's, what's ahead of him one game at a time. Anything can happen. But certainly, uh, they've proven they can handle things in Western New York pretty well. No doubt about that. There's a nice long run. And it's the man once again, number 12, Jordan Chiselski. Big run there for Depew. You know, I saw practice. Big pa pass and catch and run, excuse me. Yeah, I'm sorry, Sal. I saw practice this week. Here it is, a little screen pass with the convoy in front. I saw Depew's practice this week here um, at the complex and uh, <laughs> the dramatic interception in the end zone on the practice uh, a practice throw that was just phenomenal almost like an Odell Beckham kind of catcher so he has great hands shotgun give Chiselski again another nice move Chiselski trying to get around the end he's ridden out of bounds I'm taking a look at the class B state rankings West Seneca West we showed you their score they were losing last we checked tonight but they are ranked six they're the highest ranked team from section six in the state in sixth and then South Park who won mm -hmm. a state title just a couple of years ago right. they are number 10 in the state of New York as well you know, I talked to Dick Gallagher earlier this week and I told Dick not necessarily the next week where the A's are vying for playoff berths but Sal week two of the playoffs where it's the week right before the new era field yep. playoffs will be a coin flip anything can happen it will be the most contested playoff week in class a ever 
Trout Park is 7-0 after their win last week, last night, excuse me, over, I'm being told it, who was, I'll get it again, Lakeshore, thank you very much, Lakeshore, so big win for them, so they are already 7-0. Tim Delaney does an excellent job with that group. I'm so impressed with um, the coaches from the Buffalo City Schools who came into Section 6 and have just done a, a great job, like Tim Delaney, like Jason Kolb over at Burgard. Yeah, Guys, yeah. Just, they, they've done a great job at really getting those schools right into Section 6 and doing a, an outstanding job. Yeah, McKinley's playing better yep. too now, so there's uh, there's an emergence of some city teams that can make a dent in the Section 6 playoffs. Of course, out in Class C, my alma mater, Cleveland Hill, number four in the state. They are the highest ranked team in, in Section 6. And they would have to take on Leroy if they got to five, and that's always a tough battle as well. But you look at what Glenn Graham does year in and year out over at Cleveland Hill as well. Yeah, you can't coach at all, can you? Oh, my gosh, right? <laughs> what a tremendous role model for Incredible. everybody at Cleveland Hill. Absolutely. You're just a better person if you're around a lot of these Western New York high school coaches, including the man who's next to me, and he's going to help me bring the fourth quarter. Len Jankowitz with me, Sal Capaccio. We'll have it for you next on Spectrum News when we come back because it is time for the fourth quarter with the Lancaster Legends leading the Depew Wildcats 43 to nothing here at Depew. Imagine if you had the power to choose whatever weather you wanted. Sunny and warm? You got it. Lawn needs a little water? No problem. The thing is, it's not possible. With Weather on the Ones, we can't control the weather, but we can give you updates every 10 minutes. So you'll be prepared for whatever weather conditions come your way. Weather on the Ones, only on Spectrum News. No matter how perfect the weather may be, that can change in the blink of an eye. That's why Spectrum News has weather every 10 minutes. When you need the weather, we have the weather. Spectrum News, your 24-hour local news channel, has weather every 10 minutes on the ones. One after, 11 after, 21 after, you get it. Your next local forecast is just a few minutes away. Weather on the ones, only on Spectrum News. I routinely get emails that say, you're too liberal or you're too conservative. I find that encouraging because it indicates to me that we're somewhere in the middle, which is what we're aiming for. And we have confidence that viewers have the capability of making their own decisions and taking in a whole wide range of information that we're hopefully providing to them and then subsequently they can determine how they feel and what they want to do about it. And that's our goal, is to inform. Capital Tonight, weekdays at 8 and 11.30 p.m. only on Spectrum News. If you had a magic crystal ball, it would be easy to predict the weather. But magic crystal balls don't exist? Lucky for you, there's Weather on the Ones on Spectrum News. With Weather on the Ones, you get local weather updates every 10 minutes from any device. Mornings, afternoons, or evenings, your forecast is always right around the corner. That's better than a crystal ball. Weather on the Ones, only on Spectrum News. There is a man that you are extremely familiar with, Len Jankowitz. Yeah, he's a, uh, he's a coach of many in this stadium. Right to his left, to our right, is Gary Schlehetka, who played for coach, and myself, actually, in 1977. His son plays at Iroquois. Coach Foyle is, uh, is a mentor to so many. Greater Buffalo Sports Hall of Fame member, Lancaster Hall of Fame member. Sal, he still to this day, 90 plus years of age, still helps coach the Lancaster Legends and breaks down film and still offers suggestions. Amazing man. That's amazing. Wow, how about Chesowski? Off and running. Chesowski gets into the end zone. Give it to him. Touchdown. Great, Great effort, Tom. Absolutely. I know that young man's disappointed at the outcome, but he's worked his tail off tonight and done everything he can for his Depew Wildcats. Yeah, he'll get a lot of back slaps from his teammates, especially his coaches, for giving that effort. But it's no surprise, because he's given that effort all year, and why not in one of the bigger games of the year for him? Really nice run there 
by, Dil uh, by Jordan Chiselski, the 5'8", 155-pound senior, puts Depew on the board on the very first play of the fourth quarter. Extra point kick is up, and it is through for a 43-7 Legends lead. That was great to see, Sal, on behalf of Depew and the coaching staff. Those are little pluses. <laughs> Those are little pluses that you got to have. And it tells you that our seniors are uh, not giving up the ship and still giving an effort here. What the Pew is all built on, Sal. Race to the end zone. Nice run there by Jordan Chiselski. On the day, he has 85 yards rushing. He's averaging six and a half yards a carry. Yep. Blake Antosic was trying to cut him off the pass, but Jordan beat him to the pylon and scored the six. So, Coach Wilson, they hand it off to you. A 23-yard TD run there. He's created a championship culture around his school. By the way, Sal, back in 2013, he won a section title himself. Oh, really? Yeah, that's right. And uh, that man could coach. He helps me out at uh, the combine that we do for section six. He's a tremendous, tremendous line coach. He could coach at the collegiate level and really did experience some uh, stuff at UV. And, uh, you know, went to Silver Creek and uh, Believe me, Sal, when I say this, any college, any college would hire him on the spot if he was available. Take a look at our stats through three quarters here tonight at Depew. Obviously on the scoreboard, Lancaster is dominating. They have in a couple departments as well in the stat sheet. 280 rushing to 65, 196 to 84 through the area. You see almost 500 total yards for Lancaster here tonight. The only thing that uh, Debut's done a little bit better than them, I'd say, is penalties. They've been a lot more disciplined. Four penalties for 44 yards, seven against Lancaster for 65. That's been a boiler play image for Lancaster for the previous six games and uh, Boy, they're going to be a tough out in double A. Absolutely <laughs> are. Some new players in for Lancaster again. This is Brandon Wingard, who had a nice long run just a little while ago towards the end of the third quarter. Gets the ball here. Moves up a few yards. It'll be second down and seven. Clock will tick now. I don't expect either team really to air it out too much here. I mean, maybe Depew goes to the air to try and score again if they get the ball back, but Lancaster most likely going to keep it on the ground. Although some of these backup players, you want to give them some experience doing some things and throwing the ball might be one of those things. We'll see. Snap. Give, and this one is another new running back into the game for Lancaster, and that is Tim Gardner. He is a 6'1", 195-pound junior. Yeah, I, uh, I see a lot of different guys in uniform on the field now that uh, probably haven't got some playing time in a while. Nick Bacani is one. He just left the field. A lot of seven going on here now. Yeah, they seem a little bit confused. That's why maybe you have some new guys in the game. I do like the fact that, you know, they're allowing this. Now Now you have might have a penalty coming up here if they continue to sub this way. That yeah, that was a good no that, call there. Yeah, you're going to let that, that go. Guy came on late. Another ball security issue here with the backup offense for Lancaster. Something that coach isn't going to be happy with, but give DePew credit. They're right there again to pounce on it. Boy, some ball security issues popping up here for Lancaster in this half. Well, as you mentioned before, Sal, it's a little bit different in game conditions rather than practice, you know, and uh, it looks like quarterback wanted to keep the ball. Right. Tailback didn't know who was in charge of it and, it, and that happens because of uh, the unfamiliarity of 
of game-like conditions. But credit Eric Ruff for giving a chance for everybody to play. He's done a great job with his team. By the way, uh, Eric does a great job in the offseason with leadership training in, in, the, uh, in the summertime. Sal, it's just an amazing amount of time the staff puts into off-field issues just to make sure that these guys are doing the right job on the field. New quarterback into the game for Depew as well. John Huey, 5'8", 165-pound senior. So both teams allowing some others to play now. Yeah, both coaches are sort of playing the string out here and making sure that anybody capable of playing in this Depew Lancaster Classic are able to do. Huey with the snap, turns, gives it off. You see the difference in size, too, between the two uh, second units, both, really. Uh, a little bit of a much smaller group up front on the Lancaster side from what we saw a little while ago. And really, for Depew, especially the skill position guys, you see that as well. Right. All right, there's West Seneca West now. They're back up on top, 27 to 20 over East. And Cheektowaga, how about Maryvale? Still hanging in there. Cheektowaga with a 28-21 lead over the Flyers. Talk about a neighborhood rivalry, Sal. You're, you're from there, you know. That's right. J.U. Colcrick and his Southwestern team wins 7-3 over Casadega Valley Falcon. Trojans having a nice season going on. Well, I said that I saw them play up at Cleve Hill just a few weeks ago, and what a difference mm -hmm. that in that Southwestern team from a year ago. They've done a, such a nice job, J.U. And, and his coaching staff, to get them from where they were last year to where they are now. And, and they're, they're, they're a factor in Class C. And that, right. Uh, and I believe that game could be a preliminary of the right? New Era field playoff final, as was last year. Get back to Cleve Hill, they just grind them out. It's just uh, one running back after another. Always known for the speed at Cleve Hill. I mean, just so much speed. Year in and year out, going back to the days when I was not even on varsity football yet, and they had great teams. There's a long to toss out of bounds. And you know, you go back, Cleveland lost to Maryville this year, and that's a big win for Maryville. They, you know, even though they're a bigger school than Cleveland Hill, Maryville doesn't have a lot of success. They've come close, but they haven't beaten them a lot. This year, Maryville did. I talked with Coach Denny Mason, who's now the offensive coordinator for many, many years, was the head coach, he was my head coach there. And he said, Sal, he said, we're still fast, but for the first time I can ever remember, Maryville matched our speed. And that yeah. says something about the Flyers. Yeah, Jeff Pacheri does a great job at Maryville. I know him personally. Uh He's another guy too, a grinder who just is a great role model for the uh, for the kids at Maryville, and and it doesn't take much to get you over the hump. Maybe a couple of players, and they have them this year. Steve Griffin, the defensive coordinator, former Lancaster alumni. There also too. the athletic director. Yes, he is. Does a great job at Maryville, and uh, I think I heard he may be retiring by at the end of this year. Well, Pretty sure that may be the case. Well, let's see what happens at the end of the year. Right, <laughs> before, right. <laughs> before he turns in his papers. You never know. So if you're not coach, I apologize, but. I thought I did hear someone say that. Folsonetti, nice run there by the QB, out to about the 40-yard line. Gianluca showed his showed his speed getting around there. He probably would like to keep it in bounds rather than getting out of bounds, but keep that ball tucked, Gianluca. And then we, we haven't even talked about Coach Fada and what he's done at Chitawaga. I mean, oh, good. Oh my gosh. Right. How about that situation? Vice principal and principal, head coach and assistant. Amazing, right? Yeah. Credit the Board of Education for giving them the leeway to do that. Snap and the give. Nice run, finding the hole and sneaking through. Was Robert uh, Richard Ingersoll. Ingersoll. Be a second and five here for Lancaster. 
One of my former Cleveland Hill teammates, speaking of the Cheektowaga schools, is now the head coach at JFK. That is Jeff Sabatino. Uh, Mark Ostenpowski. And Mark Ostenpowski, I don't think he's uh, coaching anymore. I think he's now in administration. Okay. They were, the, they were co-coaches. Right. Uh, I ran into Jeff at a uh, retirement party for Tony Percival not too long ago, the um, legendary track coach at Cleveland Hill. <laughs> That's right. But uh, I was at his retirement party. I saw Jeff uh, there. We talked about... Um, JFK he told me they're running the air raid offense, coach. They're running the air raid. I said, well, kids love that, right? So yeah. you should be getting some kids out. Tony Franklin's air raid, that's right. Hell Mummy, Kentucky. But they had some nice years recently as well over at JFK. Some good good football played over in these um, North Towns. But Lancaster, Depew, Chittawaga. Yeah, since we're talking about legendary coaches, there's one on the sideline for Depew, too. Harry Sugg, he's been with... Uh, Brian Wilson for a ton of years. He is just a volunteer coach who just loves the game, loves kids. Kids love him. He's been at the Pew Love Affair for football for many, many years and just a true, true friend and somebody I admire so much. <laughs> we have a first and 10 now situation here. Hear that football. Cincinnati down to the 25 with a flag on the play. Clock is ticking now, 619 left, and it stops. For so many years, Orchard Park has kind of owned this division. That's not really the team anymore. They're doing a nice job tonight, but they're in a bit of a transition mode as well. Yeah, I think every team goes through a little ebbs and tides in terms of where your seasons are and depending on the skill level of your junior, senior class. Lancaster has had a couple of years where everything's come to a point where, you know, they're, they're filling their field with a lot of athletes. Great coaching takes effect, and uh, the whole team takes off. Orchard Park had a few years that that happened. I was <laughs> unfortunately a victim of all that stuff, too, but our kids battle with them, but uh, they just had some great athletes who, uh, who had some sectional championships to show for it. Short run there. Ingersoll didn't get quite back to the original line of scrimmage, and it'll be third down. Excuse me, second down and about 13. And the big thing about football, too, Sal, as you well know, it's all those relationships you've created over the Absolutely. years. You know, and uh, Brian and Eric know the value of that. They know the value of this rivalry. They know the value of the relationship they have, and, uh, you know, the pass out to the flat. There's pitch and catch there. Ball is caught by Zach Brainerd. The athletic director of Lancaster, Brian Wild, who was an assistant coach on the sideline for Lancaster, uh, went out to lunch with Brian Wilson, the coach, you know, the other day, and uh, they both share athletic director duties, you know, and friendships, so uh, maybe for 48 minutes during the year, they're they're competing against each other, but the rest of the year, they're each other's best friend. Depew's Noah Trotta comes off the field limping. He'll be 10-2 on the sidelines. Folsonetti takes the snap, gives. This is big number 42, Blake. And Tozik, he is a 5'11", 155-pound junior. And that'll bring up fourth down, and we are inside four and a half minutes left in this one. You know, those assistant coaches for both staffs, too, do a heck of a job. Dave Mansell, we talked about Brian Wilde, Scott Gunther, Sean Brusso, as you mentioned before. Ryan Radke, a former quarterback. Chitawaga has defeated Maryville. That is a final now, 28-21. Wow. Frontier with a two-point victory over Hamburg, 22-20. Okay. Neighborhood rivalry. Absolutely. And on fourth down, Lancaster does not convert, so Depew will take over again. Yeah, and a tip of the hat to the assistant coaches at the Pew. Anthony Buno, former quarterback, just a great human being. Mark Dorenzo, we mentioned him. Chris Frankowski played here, teaches at Orchard Park, and uh, the aforementioned 
Harry Sugg. Let's take a look at this fourth down stop. All right. Whew. Nice tackle made there. And that is number 68 getting up from that. Hunter Sharples, 6'1 senior. As the sounds of Neil Diamond ring out here at the Frank Constantino Sports Complex at Depew. There's a handoff. Getting free and getting nice yardage. Is Desmond, I believe is the, the name. I don't have the, I don't have him on our roster here, but that's what we're being told from the press box. Yeah, Turner Desmond. Turner Desmond, thank you. 5'8", 155, junior. Second and four, here's another run. This one is taken up to about the 35 yard line. And pushed back, and that is number 23, Brandon Louie. Looking back at the history here between these two teams, we told you earlier 43 points would have been the largest margin of victory ever. I don't think we're there anymore. Looking back, I got to take a look at those scores that we had a little bit earlier, but I don't think we're quite there because last year, remember, there was a game that the game wound up 51, 14. I have to take a look at that. My math, I got to do my math too on this now. I'm not, now I went to Syracuse, not for math, let's remember that. <laughs> I was a history teacher at one point. Yeah, 51, 14 last year, but. Uh, so it's a 37 point game, so that, that would eclipse. So there you go. 35 to 28, West Seneca West beats West go. Seneca East. A little breath of relief from the West Seneca West fans, that's for sure. You know, regardless of the big scores, and I wasn't much on kind of establishing records and scoring or anything else, I was just worried about the W, just like Eric yes. is right now. And, uh, you know, these, these, you remember the wins, but sometimes not necessarily the scores, but. It was a 36 to nothing score. Lancaster won in 2013. Mm -hmm. That would match that here. And 37 points last year. So this would be the second largest margin of victory tied for it at least. And you know what? It's probably a direct reflection, Sal. You mentioned these scores here of the spread offense that is kind of in vogue in high school football right, right now. You know, back in the days where you mentioned that 3 to 2 score, believe me, there were two tight ends, full house backfield, and we were running a belly series. and. <laughs> Probably ankle deep mud, you know. <laughs> That's right. There have been several ties. There you go. There's a look at the, and you, as you said, it's 5-5 five, five the last 10 years. People might not realize that mm -hmm. because of the last few years that Lancaster has pretty much dominated. But, you know, Depew had their run. They had four out of five before that. Depew, Lancaster, a couple of them in there. And the funny thing about these games that are on the, on the board right now, the ones I remember, Sal, are the ones you lose. Yeah, yeah. They've, Coaches, that's oh. those are the ones that stick with you, right? Yeah, because that's why coaches get out. They say that the highs of winning will never match the lows of losing. That's why I'm up in this booth. So <laughs> that's why I'm up here because those you, you want to do the best you can for your kids. A lot of times, when the results aren't there, you, f you feel like you're not giving them enough. You right. know, and that sounds like it's just a, a trite little you. excuse, but really, uh, these kids work so hard nowadays more than ever. It's 365 days a year they're thinking football even if they're on for another sport. So you want to make sure they give them the best advantage you can of winning. And sometimes when that doesn't go, you kind of feel you might be the, the reason for it. Although, uh, you want to do the best you can. Maybe one of the more odd, odd things about the rival, there's been four 0-0 zero, zero ties. Four. <laughs> zero, zero. Yeah. There have been a few ties. There have been more than four ties, but four zero, zero ties. And here's another oddity, too, is that we took a, a few years off when this rivalry got started because, Sal, the games got so out of hand and physical. Yeah, wow. You know, and probably there's some off-the-field situations that caused the games to be suspended. You know, during the war years or, you know, yeah. prior to that. But there were some, of course, these are only stories now I'm hearing that are kind of sent down from generations. But there were some situations where things weren't, where they are now. Under 20 seconds left, and no surprise, Coach, our player of the game is going to be Andrew Hersey 
who had one heck of a game running the football. 174 yards on the ground, average almost 16 yards a carry. He scored three times for Lancaster here tonight, who come away victorious 43 to seven over the Depew Wildcats. And there you have a look at the winning head coach, Eric Rupp, and his Lancaster legends. 43 to seven, the final score. We'll take a timeout, we'll come right back here to Depew to talk with our player of the game and that man right there, the head coach of Lancaster, Eric Rupp. Imagine if you had the power to choose whatever weather you wanted. Sunny and warm? You got it. Lawn needs a little water? No problem. The thing is, it's not possible. With Weather on the Ones, we can't control the weather, but we can give you updates every 10 minutes. So you'll be prepared for whatever weather conditions come your way. Weather on the Ones, only on Spectrum News. No matter how perfect the weather may be, that can change in the blink of an eye. That's why Spectrum News has weather every 10 minutes. When you need the weather, we have the weather. Spectrum News, your 24-hour local news channel, has weather every 10 minutes on the ones. One after, 11 after, 21 after, you get it. Your next local forecast is just a few minutes away. Weather on the ones, only on Spectrum News. I routinely get emails that say, you're too liberal or you're too conservative. I find that encouraging because it indicates to me that we're somewhere in the middle, which is what we're aiming for. And we have confidence that viewers have the capability of making their own decisions and taking in a whole wide range of information that we're hopefully providing to them and then subsequently they can determine how they feel and what they want to do about it. And that's our goal, is to inform. Capital Tonight, weekdays at 8 and 11.30 p.m. only on Spectrum News. If you had a magic crystal ball, it would be easy to predict the weather. But magic crystal balls don't exist? Lucky for you, there's Weather on the Ones on Spectrum News. With Weather on the Ones, you get local weather updates every 10 minutes from any device. Mornings, afternoons, or evenings, your forecast is always right around the corner. That's better than a crystal ball. Weather on the Ones, only on Spectrum News. Three to seven, the final score here. Lancaster winds up beating Depew. Sal Capaccio here with Len Jankowitz. And really, this was Depew's, Lancaster's game from the start, I should say. They had a heck of a first quarter where they really just jumped on Depew. And once it was really De Lancaster taking over after a fumble recovery touchdown, by Max Giordano, they just rolled from there. Depew started to get a few things going here and there, but really, once Lancaster shut the door after that play, I felt that's when Lancaster kind of shut the door the rest of the way. You see the Lancaster team getting together at midfield and grabbing the championship trophy here in this backyard rivalry. One of the best rivalries, not only in all of Western New York, not only in all of New York State, but throughout the nation. It's been featured on many documentaries and magazines and publications as far as how good this rivalry is, how long it's been going on. And tonight, it is Lancaster who dominates it 43 to seven, the final score over Depew. We're gonna bring in our player of the game and the head coach, Eric Rupp, and our player of the game, Andrew Hersey. We'll talk to uh, 
the player in just a second, but uh, coach, this was a fantastic game for your kids to come out here and really the first quarter dominating them the way that you did. Did that kind of set the tone for the rest of the day? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we always want to start quick. That's one of our goals. Uh, we know we got a stout defense, uh, so we can put up a couple scores quick. I, I think the other team has to alter what they're trying to do offensively. Did you have any fear going into this game that your team might be a little distracted with the rivalry? You know that you have an undefeated season going on, and how did you overcome that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you can always throw the records out the window when it's Lancaster to Pew, uh, but to our kids' credit, they were focused and they prepared you know this week just like they did against Orchard Park or Jamestown all right well now you have playoffs on the horizon so what do you have to do anything you need to work on to make sure you maintain what you have yeah there's always little things to tweak here and there uh, we got to cut down on our penalties for sure ball security today got a little sloppy but uh, you know we're we're playing well right now how about this guy next to me here three touchdowns on the night another 180 yards rushing yeah no Andrew's a tremendous athlete and uh, you know he's a small target he's tough to bring down and he runs hard all right, well, thank you. Congratulations. Go celebrate. Thank you very much. All right, Andrew Hersey, and you are the player of the game. Congratulations. Three times you find the end zone. But really, uh, we, we watch you run tonight, and if you just step a little bit over this way towards me, if you, you we watch you run tonight, you get that one cut, you get in the open field, no one's touching you, man. What's that like out there? Yeah, um, you know, we just wrap in practice all week. You know, my line did a really good job opening holes for me, and, you know, I had the easiest job of the night, I think. I just had to look for the work they were doing and just follow them behind the line, so... Was all I had to do. Obviously, a game like this, everybody's going to be very hyped. It's a backyard rivalry. You come into this game, you have an undefeated record. Once you guys started rolling, did that really help you kind of settle the nerves and know that you could just take this one home? Yeah, I mean, at, at first, everyone was a little distracted with all this stuff going on yep. in school, and you know, the big crowd obviously was a little, you know, stunning at first. But once we calmed our nerves a little bit after that first drive, and we took control of the game like we usually do. What do you guys have to do in the playoffs to make sure you maintain this? Um, just keep rolling. I think what we're doing right now, if we play any team, I think we can just keep putting up points like we did tonight. We'll just be unstoppable. All right, congratulations. Go celebrate with your teammates. Thank you. All right, that is Andrew Hersey. He is our player of the game. I welcome back in the coach, Len Jankowitz. This was really Lane Caster's game from the start. We saw the man there who put a couple of touchdowns, three of them, in fact, on, but really it wasn't even him. It was Max Giordano who started things going. And, of course, they had a quarterback tonight who went 13 of 13. <laughs> it's an atypical performance. Uh, Lancaster done this all year, and no reason they can't continue like this in the playoffs. So. No, no doubt about it. All right, well, this is a 47 uh, – to the 43 to 7 final score here at Lancaster and you see the team the Lancaster legends right there with their championship trophy we are going to wrap it up here from Depew High School for our director producer Rick Carnath for my partner Len Jankowitz I'm Sal Capaccio say congratulations to Lancaster on to the playoffs for both teams the legends win it 43 to 7 good night from Depew New York Imagine if you had the power to choose whatever weather you wanted. Sunny and warm? You got it. Lawn needs a little water? No problem. The thing is, it's not possible. With weather on the ones, we can't control the weather, but we can give you updates every 10 minutes. So you'll be prepared for whatever weather conditions come your way. Weather on the ones, only on Spectrum News. I routinely get emails that say, you're too liberal or you're too conservative. I find that encouraging because it indicates to me that we're somewhere in the middle, which is what we're aiming for. And we have confidence that viewers have the capability of making their own decisions and taking in a whole wide range of information that we're hopefully providing.